Morning all. <clears throat> How are we all doing? Morning. Who we got? Peter, Evil, Ian, Amy, Martin, no George. My microphone working? It is. Yeah, good. Lucy, Dougal, Virginia, Daniel, Vitali, Gina. Although they're in the US, it's 12 a.m. That's very, very early. Morning, Sarah, Franco, Gregors. How are we all doing? Happy Monday, FT.net. Uh, so, yes, Monday. Another week. Another week of pain with this US dollar yen, which is driving me up the wall. I didn't manage to get out on Friday. I'm getting out this morning. Uh, I, can, I said on Friday I was going to get out of this um, so that I didn't have to pay the weekend swaps on it. <clears throat> and I just completely forgot. So I held it over the weekend, unfortunately, which is a bit annoying. Um, but uh, yes, uh, we're 150 ADR day. Uh, the Japanese are not intervening. So they've decided um, to say the same thing over and over and over again that they always have with every intervention they've ever done, but just bother, not bother to press the button. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get out, unfortunately, which is going to cost me 5.5%. Anyway, um, nothing much I can do with it. It's uh, it's not going down. So I am going to give it um, <clears throat> till, uh, well, as you can see, I'm going to give it until just over 150 ADR. Um, and I can guarantee you, as soon as that stop loss is hit, this will drop a thousand ADR. It will just drop. It will go. It will fly because it's just going to do it. It's just I can't hold it. So very annoying. This month is turning into a nightmare. This whole year so far is turning into a nightmare. Uh, morning, Michael. Morning, it's time. Um, so yeah. So basically, uh, we're still pushing on that. So what we we'll do this morning is we'll go through the news. Uh, we'll look at what's going on with the Middle East because that is something that is going to potentially affect everything um and uh, see what we've got coming up this week so um starting off with the weekend's news on financial juice uh, obviously we had iran hitting israel this week uh this weekend so it seems though as though things are escalating in the middle east which is what the rest of the world did not want to happen um that whole area controls oil um so if it does escalate and Israel retaliate for this attack, so basically don't forget this attack from Iran is a retaliation to Israel's attack on Iran. So Israel started it. Iran are retaliating. So basically they're even at the moment. It's tit for tat. Um, so the question is, and what everybody's now asking the rest of the world of Israel is, okay, yeah, you hit them. They hit you. Well done. Uh, you won because they shot 330 missiles at you and only seven of them got through. Good job. Uh, so that's it. Well done. And leave it there. If they don't leave it there, that conflict is going to escalate and it's going to drag uh, all of the Middle Eastern countries into it in some way, shape or form, and potentially the UN and potentially the West. So if that happens, it's the start of another major conflict. Um, first thing to go, as in the Gulf War, and you probably remember scenes if you remember the Gulf War, uh, the first thing that goes is oil fields. You see oil fields burning across the world, across the Middle East. Yeah. What do you think happens to oil prices when there is none left? It goes up. So I've opened a new account this morning uh, and I've bought oil this morning. And I will scale into this oil. Uh, it's a gamble. It's a play. It's based on purely Middle East conflict. If Middle East conflict doesn't happen, it's going to be a loss. But uh, So I'm buying oil uh, today. And I will buy as much as I can if it continues to drop and scale in um, because in the next 48 hours, we will know whether or not they're going to press that button or not. So um, potential for oil prices to go up. If oil prices go up, that creates inflation. Yeah, inflation is the main problem we have everywhere at the moment, which is why these interest rates have had to fly up. We're just about starting to get inflation under control. Uh, and this was caused by the Russia-Ukraine conflict, amongst other things, but partly by Russia-Ukraine and oil. And just as we're getting this under control, just as everybody's starting to reduce their interest rates, if that oil price goes through the roof again, everybody's inflation is going to drive up because one of the core drivers for inflation is energy costs. So, uh, again, we're at this, I keep saying the word, and I hate it, unprecedented time. Uh, We've not had this situation before. We haven't had interest rates up there before. We haven't had inflation up the highs of where it is at the moment with a second potential 
worldwide conflict starting that's going to control or restrict the flow of oil and therefore drive inflation through the roof. So this next 48 hours is critical um, as to what is going to happen with all markets, um, stock markets as well. Um, you'll probably find, uh, oh, lovely, nice breaks this morning. Um, oh, that's nice. TP, TP, job done, job done, trailer. Nice clean breaks on the DAX and the FTSE. I just started the EA off again properly today um, for the stock index hedge strategy. We seem to be getting a little bit more um, movement at the open now. So uh, I've started off very cautious, very small risk. Um, but what I was going to show you was obviously what happens to stock indexes. Um, conflict generally tends to have the market fly out of stock indices. So we've had this big old rally going on across all these indices um, of late S&P is probably the more stable of the three. So you can see what's been happening since January. Yeah, we're back in a lovely bull market. Is this a bear flag, uh, a bull flag, or not? Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, but if this does kick off, this is going that way. Uh, so if you are investing in indices or you are a long-only player in indices, as most people tend to be, be careful. Um, that could well be a very fast, sharp undoing. So if you stick a fib on that uh, and look for normal market structure. So if this is just a reaction, that's a very thin fib. Uh, can't see it. So if this is um, a flag, you would expect somewhere around about 23 retracement, which is a flag break. Uh, normal pullback somewhere around about 38 to 50% retracement. That is assuming market structure is just going to continue in the way it's continuing. Deep pullback would be down to 61.8, and obviously an A-shape recovery or A-shape pattern will be uh, an undoing of that move. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. But, um, yeah, very tricky situation uh, everybody's in at the moment now um, because of what Iran's done. Uh, again, they will always get the blame. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens over the next... Um, the, what's he gone? Uh, over the next 48 hours so basically the war cabinet have met in israel um and it seems very much at the moment what we've heard coming out um they're all very much for retaliation in which case it all kicks off so we'll see uh, we'll see what happens now when uh conflict kicks off we will have a look at the rest of the news in a minute but when conflict kicks off we tend to get um safe haven runs so things like the swiss franc um, we had quite a strong reaction the last 48 hours, uh, Thursday, Friday last week with the Swissy. So we had decent movement into the Swiss franc. If you look at all the Swiss franc pairs, yeah, they all came down very quick. So there is money starting to come into that Swiss franc. This is a typical safe haven run. Um, it tends to be constant as well. So um, if that is going to happen, if that does kick off over there, you'll find the Swiss franc will suddenly start to power up and it will continue to power up all the time. There's uncertainty as to what's going on. Um, uh, US dollar Swiss, we know the US dollar is having a very big rally off the back of the um, last CPI figures. Uh, you can see, obviously, this hasn't made any progress against the Swiss franc, which means that Swiss franc is also incredibly powerful at the moment. So things like the Swiss franc and the yen tend to get bought into. Today, so far, and you can see the ADRs on the screen here, the yen is being absolutely killed this morning. So um, it's complete unknown what's going to happen over the next sort of over this week, basically, because there's an awful lot of catalysts that could kick in to drive the market in any direction. We've got loads of talk from the Fed about, yes, we are going to push those interest rates back. They confirmed over the weekend that it's likely that we are going to go back at least to July. But that's only a month. It's not the end of the world. But they could go back further. If oil prices start to rally, that will drive inflation up, which means they won't move their interest rates potentially this year. The euro said last week we are going to be dropping interest rates in June, as expected. Now is the time to uncouple ourselves from the US dollar. We're not going to wait for them to go. We're going to go before them. Not if it kicks off and the UN gets involved, they won't, because all of a sudden that oil price will constrict uh, everything. Inflation will drive up, which means they may not 
decrease their interest rates. So we saw that big drop in the euro last week or start to happen. Um, that could easily reverse itself this week as well because they've turned around and said, yes, we are going to. So you want to be selling the euro basically because they're going to be first to go with interest rates. That could all change. So there's this, you know, it's this whole year so far has been impossible to predict anything because it changes constantly every single month. The outlook on every currency has been changing. Now, obviously, with what's going on with the Middle East, there's an outlook change potentially again, and obviously an escalation. US have said they're not going to get involved in it. So basically, yes, we're allied. We're 100% behind you, Israel. But if you fire any missiles, actually, we won't bother. What do you make of that? And obviously, we've got a regime change coming. If Trump gets back in, the situation is all going to change again. So there's, there's a hell of a lot going on fundamentally at the moment. It's very, very difficult to unpick anything. So just got to hold on tight and uh, just try and go with the flow, basically, as much as you can at the minute, which is very, very difficult when you mean reversion trader because we are just still getting these big, strong moves and then the market gets scared and doesn't do anything. So we'll see what happens. But um, over the weekend... Uh, we obviously had that kicking off. Um, uh, the Japanese came out this morning. Uh, I'm just going through the, where are we? There we go. Um, so this was 4.28 this morning. Um, Suzuki closely monitoring Forex movements. Um, uh, I want to be fully prepared regarding Forex moves. Um, so this to me sounds very much like a, uh, I know you're all expecting us to press the button by now. I know we've been talking about it a long time, but we just want to make sure we're ready. So this is kind of more delay tactics from the Japanese. Yes, we are aware we need to be pressing this button, but we just want to make sure we do it right. It's like, make your mind up. Anyway, um, so that, again, more talk of intervention over the weekend um, from Japan. So um, that's pretty much it for the news over the weekend. It's not doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that things are on a knife edge at the moment everywhere. So um, lots of tensions all over the place, lots of potential interest rate uh, affecting um, moves and in, specifically inflation affecting moves, which obviously is going to affect uh, interest rates. So, um, so that's the weekend news. Bank of Japan came out this morning and said, we are watching this very, very closely. Um, they might be watching. I, I can watch it as much as I like, but if you're not going to do anything about it, shut up. Basically, Japanese are just not, you know, pointless, pointless, pointless signals as to what they're going to do and doing nothing about it. So um, unfortunately, it's just going to cost me a fortune, but I can't do anything about it. So I'm out of this this morning. Uh, we're 150 ADR now. Still rallying. Uh, so you're, the only thing you can look at to the upside here is big round numbers. Um, so we've got 153. Oh, no, sorry, not 153. Uh, 154 is there where we are approaching now, um, which is basically exactly where my stop losses are, which is a really stupid place to put them. So I'm going to go a bit, little bit higher. I'm not going to be able to move that, am I? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, 154 is your next big round number to the upside. Uh, and then we've got 155 is your next big round number, which is there. So, obviously, we, we're looking at the 152 level as the previous intervention level. Um, that got surpassed. They screamed and shouted. The market got stalled for a bit, thinking about it. This morning, they've gone way beyond that. So that 153 level blew straight through it. Uh, 154 is your next BRN. So that's all we can do is look at the big round numbers because we've got no, there's nothing historically we can look at now to say this is where we're headed. So we are in uncharted territories. It's just a case of let's look at, see how far we can get. So you just got to look at the big round numbers and the halves and to see if there's any market reaction at those levels moving forward. Um, so I'm just using those at the moment as kind of lines in the sand, um, but got to get out of it. It's cost me nearly a thousand dollars in swap. Uh, it's going to cost me about two and a half, three K in loss. Can't do anything about it. It's just, they're just not doing what they say. Uh, I'm on the verge of basically 
saying, screw the yen, I'm never trading it again. I've had enough. Uh, basically, it's just costing me too much money. Um, so I want to go long only on it because of swaps. I can't long it because uh, it's, it, it's too unpredictable. So uh, I might just scrap it from the portfolio for the moment and trade normal currencies. But we'll see. Um, <clears throat> you can probably tell by the tone of my voice, I've just had enough of this thing. Yeah, just it's basically you feel like as a trader, you're being lied to permanently. By in in a normal trading conditions, you feel like you're being lied to by everybody. The Fed, everybody's lying to you all the time. The Japanese are just playing with you. It's like they're not just lying to you; they're poking you, and they're just dangling carrots and just going nee, nee, and running away like a small child. You're a country. Run it properly or disappear. As far as I'm concerned. Anyway, that's the Japanese. Sorry if you're Japanese, but I don't like you anymore. Um, <laughs> no, I'm joking. I mean the Bank of Japan. Don't mind that. Uh, morning, everybody else. I haven't said hello to. Would the conflict in the Middle East benefit the yen? In a normal world, yes. Uh, normally, markets will buy the crap out of the yen, crap out of the Swiss, crap out of oil, crap out of gold. That's basically what happens when wars kick off. Not happening, is it? This is not normal uh, at the moment. Uh, look at gold as well so um, obviously the gold price you can see uh, spiked up like a crazy thing as well last week uh, we had a massive mo I mean look at the normal price action on gold normal candlesticks on gold those are biggies that's a biggie that's a pretty big one. Look at the size of that move on gold yeah, on uh, Friday. So we had a move of uh, 977, so 200% of ADR on Friday. Boom. Yeah. Uh, you buy gold in times of crisis. Um, so it, it's just... Nothing is reacting normally at the moment. I think the whole world economics are just on their head. Yeah, markets just don't know what to do with anything at the minute. It's just uh, everything's a bit of a crazy, crazy beast, isn't it? So just got to try and do what you can to extract what you can out of it, which is bloody hard work at the moment. Uh, USA spent 1.1 billion defending Israel in one night. They got a fair few bob, haven't they, the US? Uh, morning, Steve. Welcome back to the oil markets. Yeah, it's only a temporary thing. Uh, I've literally stuck a couple of grand in this account. Uh, just a quick double, basically. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a This is a casino trade, as I call it. Yeah. Uh, red or black. I get, I've, this is uh, every, every time I press the button on this is 5% risk. So I'm 5% in. Uh, there's another 5% going on there. If we get down to this low, I might well put another one on. I might leave it, actually, just see how far we get down. But I'll take another one today if it's down. Um, because if they do press that button and they do hit an oil field, that has to happen. It's a supply and demand commodity product. Yeah, When supply drops, i.e. you blow it up, price goes up. There isn't any other thing. It's cut and dry. It's supply and demand. Yeah, if there's less of it, it's more expensive. Diamonds, expensive. Why? Not many about. Gold, not much of it about. Oil, not much of it about. Blow it up. Um, uh, blow up a pipeline. Yeah, there's, there's major pipelines throughout the Middle East that supply the rest of the world. Yeah, there's lots of them. Yeah, if you blow up two of those, and this country is the only one that's now got a pipeline left, what do you think they do with their prices? It's just supply and demand. It's very, very simple commodity trading normally. But there is a massive drop in uh, demand because we're all going electric so um, or hydrogen. But, yeah, so this is a gamble trade, basically. Uh, I've just stuck a couple of grand in a prime account, and uh, I'm just going to keep buying it. And if it goes into profit, I'll add, and I'll add, and I'll keep adding because I want to see this back up at the Ukraine uh, highs. So this is the Ukraine. This is right. So that's just to explain for those that don't know about oil and war. This is the war kicking off in Ukraine. Yeah. So ADR on this is uh, twenty. That is three hundred and forty. Yeah. 
So that's what I'm playing. Yeah, I'm playing that. So I'm getting in, getting in, getting in. When it does that, I'll hold it for three or four days and I'll get out. I will double or treble the account. That's it. It's just a gamble, basically, at the end of the day. Um, high stakes gamble. But when you've got things like this happening, these are opportunities to make, you know, a decent amount of money very, very, very short time. Um, if it doesn't work out, you know, it's, it's like, think of it just like a trade. This account is a trade, basically. I've stuck in an oil account, basically. So uh, the trade is, the risk is $2,000, i.e. it will either blow the account or it won't. It will get margin called and it will close it. Or it will go massively into profit and I'll just shut it at some point. So uh, we'll see. So, yeah, so that's what's going on at the moment with the news basically over the weekend. Um, so we'll see what happens this week. Uh, we'll go through the rest of the news for this week. Not that it's going to have an awful lot of impact, but we'll see. Uh, could have the Dow drop Friday because short sellers uh, who knew this was coming what was coming Saturday. Yeah, well, it's just market. Basically, the markets are, we know the markets are jittery at the moment. This is why we're getting all this spiky movement. So you go like that and you go, no, no. there's news. Just sit tight. Because we don't, they don't know what's going on. Normally, you'd have an awful lot of speculative movement in the market, which is what causes market structure. This is the constant movement we have in all markets. When there is no real certainty of what's happening the market just reacts on news and it goes quick right now wait what happens don't know nothing's happening okay what should we do don't know wait that's what we're getting so it's it's a very uh tricky uh time for investors so they tend to be in and out the market a lot faster so um you get people pulling out of indices before the weekend because they don't want to hold or pulling out stocks as well, because they don't want to hold because it's risky. Stocks are risky, very risky. Um, a lot of the defense sector as well. If you want to be, if you will look at stock sectors, if you want to make money at the moment, buy the defense sector. Anybody that supplies the defense sector, electronics, NASDAQ, they will supply the defense sector. Anybody that supplies the defense sector, boom. Yeah, if war kicks off. What do we need? Military stuff. Any company making military stuff is going to kill it this year if it happens. So go and look at stock sectors as well. But yeah, they'll pull money out of the markets towards the weekend. So you might get these big drops happening every weekend. Never know. We'll see. Morning, Johannes. That will be on my gravestone. This is not normal. Yeah. It's, I haven't said, you go back and look at my live streams for the last sort of two, three years or so. I don't normally say that. <laughs> But this is not normal. This year, this last six months has just been hideous. When your haircutters tells you they bought gold, it's time to sell. Yeah. Uh, morning, Chucks. Picked up the new EA. Cool. Uh, I believe Japanese ministers and billionaire cartel are getting their short orders ready. Yeah. Quite possibly. Although... Yeah, I mean the Japanese cartels. You have to ask. You have to ask the question, don't you? Who runs Japan? But uh, yeah, I mean this is. See, we're one. We're one fifty ADR on this one. But you look at the other yen pairs. Yeah, look at the US dollar yen. Yeah, and then look at the euro yen. Yeah, I got out the euro yen last week because it dropped dramatically. This thing is not making new highs. There has been a lot of strength coming into the yen. This this move on the US dollar yen is is US dollar related, not yen related. There is strength in in the yen. If you look at all the other yen pairs sideways, that's gone obviously north this morning because everything's you know is definitely a weak move from the yen this morning. But the CAD yen sideways, Aussie yen down, pound yen down, New Zealand yen down, US yen crazy. We, it, but it's the perfect storm, isn't it? Holy crap, we're not going to reduce the interest rates by the crap out the US dollar. It's always going to beat the yen. The US dollar is always going to beat the yen. It's the strongest currency on the planet. But don't press the button, as they normally do. Morning, Kennelly. Uh, JPY drop on Tuesday. That'd be nice. Uh, if I'm still in it. So I've decided um, I'm going to hold, and like you just said, until Tuesday, uh, swap double swaps on Wednesday. Uh, so 
I'll hold and see where we are over the next 24 hours. Uh, there's so much that can happen in the next 24 hours. Uh, everywhere. It's just like... I watched uh, Fallout this weekend on uh, Amazon, uh, which is brilliant. It's all about nuclear apocalypse. Um, and you just have to sit there and think, this is how the markets feel to me at the moment. It's like, uh, that was all engineered as well. I'm not going to ruin it. Um, but yeah, basically, you just get the feeling uh, uh, some something's ready to pop everywhere at the minute. It's just a very weird feeling in the market. I agree with this barber about gold, yeah. There's a blank, blank. I've talked to my, my uh, barber about uh, what I do. So certain people you talk to, they say, what do you do? Uh, trade. Oh, the stock market? No, don't trade stocks. So, oh, what do you trade then? Foreign exchange. What, what you mean when we go on holiday? Oh, I'll shut that down there. Can't explain it. My papa told me to buy NVIDIA at Christmas. Uh, if I had, it would have been made 100% by now. Yes. How did your barber know that? See, barbers know everything. They, they speak to the entire population of the planet, don't they, basically? They know everything. They're like pubs. You go into a pub. The guy behind the bar knows everything, what's going on in that pub. Knows everything about everything. Because he talks to everybody. Very intelligent people, barbers. Sources of information. Uh, their prices have gone up as well. Anyway, um, right, so US dollar yen. So that's the news and the Middle East and everything. So uh, obviously just wanted to spend the first sort of half an hour or so setting the week up really because it's going to be a potentially a volatile week. Um, and somebody said in the uh, Telegram group over the weekend, uh, should we turn off EAs over this week because it's going to be volatile? My answer was, how do you make money in the market when it moves up and down? If it moves up and down faster because of volatility, you're going to make money faster. You could also lose money faster. But volatility is how we make money. If things don't go up and down, we can't do anything, can we? We can't make money. You can't make money in a flat market, as we we know. Yeah, look at my euro pound trade. Yeah, that took three months to make very, very little money. You very hard to make money when this thing doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Volatility is fantastic for us. We want the market to be volatile, moving fast, up, down, all over the place, because that's how we make our money. So could be an explosive one. Um, but week wise for news, uh, not an awful lot this week. So uh, we've got some bits and pieces in there, CPI wise, but um, it's a little bit of a flat week. Um potentially for normal news so um today we've got uh retail sales i was going to stream this afternoon but i'm not sure that this is going to do an awful lot to be honest um this is the first week of quarter two um or rather the first retail announcement for quarter two so the we obviously have christmas which happens in december every year um you have the january sales uh, and then February and into March, April, retail sales tend to drop. Yeah, because um, all the data is skewed by Christmas buying. Got some more ADRs going off. Uh, more yen, CAD yen uh, and US yen 150s now. So that's officially hit 150 ADR. Um, so retail sales, as you can see, are forecast to um, drop. Uh, the core, they're forecasting to go up, but overall it should be sort of around about that, maybe a little bit down, which is typical. So um, I'm not really that worried about that this afternoon. We'll probably get some movement off of it, um, judging by what the US dollar is doing this morning so far. Uh, quite possibly it could be a fast drop correction, but we'll see. Um, so that's this afternoon. That's the only news we've got. Tomorrow, we've got the claimant count change, which is to do with unemployment, which doesn't tend to do an awful lot. Um, it, it sometimes moves the market, but not, not usually. We don't get a massive move off of that, unless it's a really big deviation, in which case we might do. The main news tomorrow is CPI for the Canadian dollar. So this is obviously what we're interested in at the moment, inflation. Inflation drives interest rates. Interest rates drives, drive currency strength. So um, we are forecasting, basically, for CPI to bounce quite heavily. Yeah. So if you look at the Canadian interest rates, 
where we are at the moment. We're up five percent, have been stable as we know. Um, they are expecting this bounce to happen. So we always get this inflation doesn't drop in a straight line. It comes down like market structure, like everything in bits, in waves, basically. So they're expecting a bounce, um, which is exactly what we've just had in the US. Um, but it's stalling too fast in the US. Uh, it's not getting down to target anywhere near as fast as they want it to. Whereas Canada, we're below 3% now, target is 2%. So it depends what this figure comes out at, but they are expecting it to slow. So they haven't really said when they're going to change their interest rates. We're just expecting as normal that they fall in line with the US and do it when the US does. So if that is going to be the case, when the CPI figures come out on uh, Tuesday, if they are a bounce, we will probably find a little bit of strength coming into the Canadian dollar. Um, so the uh, the CPI, the main CPI number is the monthly. The yearlies uh, are normally more accurate and you only get a 0.1 deviation on them, which doesn't tend to move the market much. But this will be the one that will be really interesting. So we're forecasting quite a big bounce on this. If we get a 0.7, the market is probably going to be more into the CAD uh, and we'll see a rally in the CAD. If that comes out a lot lower than that, um, there's a good chance that we'll see a little bit of a drop in the CAD. But it really is quite a big deviation. So there's it could massively go either way, this one. Either way, however, um, we know the CAD is linked very much to the US dollar. And as the US dollar is rallying, it's going to be harder for them to drop the CAD, I think. But obviously, this is Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, if Israel fire a load of rockets off this afternoon or this evening or tomorrow morning, it's going to make no difference whatsoever. That's just going to do what the hell it likes. So, um, but that is the main um, news this week is that CPI number. So we'll see what happens with that. I'll be streaming for that tomorrow afternoon. We've got Bailey speaking tomorrow evening. Haven't heard from him for a while. We've got Macklem speaking tomorrow evening, which will be directly related to what's happening there. And um, we've also got Powell speaking tomorrow evening. So three main bodies all speaking within half an hour of each other tomorrow evening. Massive opportunity for upsetting the apple cart, especially this guy. We haven't heard from Powell since those uh, numbers came out on the US, which have driven it up. So he has the power to basically go, actually, no, we're going to stick with June. And that will come down like a house of cards, that US dollar. So very important one tomorrow evening. Uh, we got CPI overnight for the uh, New Zealand. Uh, they're forecasting not a lot of change. New Zealanders are really stuck at the minute. Um, we're on, uh, sorry, number one, on 5.5, very, very high inflation. They're forecasting it not to change. So um, it is coming down fast, though. So th that is good. Um, but I, I'm not sure we're going to get a massive move off of that New Zealand dollar. Uh, I don't think there's an awful lot of reason for them to, to pile in. Uh, everything's going okay, but they're behind. Yeah, they're running really fast, but they are actually miles behind. So they're like kind of sprinting for the finish line, but they're back here somewhere. So shouldn't really be a massive bullish or bearish move on that. Um, we've got CPI for the pound. This is the annual figure. Um, we're expecting inflation to have come down. That will have come down. Wouldn't expect anything particularly exciting off of the back of that unless it isn't coming down, in which case then we could have a big move. If it comes down faster than expected, they will expect us to fall in line with the euro in the UK um, and do it earlier. So get that interest rate down uh, probably June. Uh, we're sitting at 5.25. Ours is at 3.4. It's coming down very, very nicely. We're expecting that to come down farther and faster. So um, once we start getting to that three level, um, we start thinking definitely hard about interest rate drops, as we know the euro are. Yeah. So if we can get that down to that 3.1 level, um, I think there's a good chance that we'll see a good couple of drops in the interest rates. And obviously, we've got Bailey talking as well this week tomorrow about it so um obviously you can see from the us uh they're roughly where we are but their inflation is ticking up ours is coming down quite nicely so it's all looking bearish for euro bearish for pound that will confirm that ne bearishness um moving forward uh bailey speaking and then we've got unemployment rates for the aussies on thursday so that's obviously a key one unemployment is very core for inflation 
Uh, sorry, for interest rates. So, um, yeah, good moves there potentially. And then we've got retail sales Friday for the pound, which is nothing. So they won't really do an awful lot. So that's your news this week. Um, there's quite a lot of it, but the main impact news is going to be that these guys talking is going to be important um, tomorrow. So it's all really tomorrow. It's all focused around tomorrow. Uh, and as Israel have said, give us 48 hours to have a think. Um, that's kind of tomorrow as well. So, you know, it's almost like Armageddon could kick off tomorrow, couldn't it? But anyway, we'll see. So that's your news. Um, we've got some ECB news coming out. I see a chance of a July rate cut following the move in June. Um, so uh, Simcus basically saying, you know, not only confirming June, now saying we'll probably do one in July as well, even bigger. Uh, bearishness uh geopolitical shocks such as an escalation in israel and iran conflict could cancel the june rate cut you know this is what i'm saying it's it seems at the moment every time we get some kind of inkling of something which gives us any kind of yeah that's what we need to do we get something else coming on go unless there's always an if at the moment and a but with everything to do with fundamentals it's very 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 difficult because things will just turn on their heads if the nato have to get involved in any way shape or form in russia or in this middle east conflict that is going to put massive pressure on europe uh and the euro uh itself so you know the, it could be a case of we'll hold all this lot until next year guys because we've got more important things to do you know it's very 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 tricky at the minute uh let's just see if the euro has had a reaction to that Not a lot. A little bit bullish. Um, <clears throat> is there an option in the MRA EA for drawdown control settings based on percentage? Uh, no. So just set set it to uh, whatever a percentage of your account is. So if you want to use half of one percent of your account, and your account is ten thousand, do the maths. Just put put the amount in. Uh, US will want to lower interest rates before the election year. They will want to, yeah. But if this carries on doing what this is doing, they can't. Any any government or central bank uh, with inflation rising that decides to drop interest rates is committing economic suicide. They can't. This number, unless they manipulate that number and lie, Hang on, this is the Fed in America we're talking about. Uh, when they manipulate that number and lie, they'll be able to drop that. But they can't drop that until uh, that starts to drop. And it's not. Going totally the wrong way. This is why we've got this move on this US dollar at the moment. This was a shock. This was like, what do you mean it's going up? Uh, and what do you mean by that much? That was the, you know, this was not... Um, not what the market uh, or the economists were expecting to happen. Yeah, we've, we've been we've been gearing ourselves up um, for a drop in this US dollar. We've been completely sideways most of the time on this US dollar, trying to wait and pick when they're going to drop that rate. It's changed. It's gone the other way. It's like no, they're not going to drop it. When when are they going to drop it? Now it's not a case of are they going to drop it which is where we were, it was a case of they're going to drop it. Yeah. Now it's a case of are they going to drop it? Because they don't have to. And if inflation goes up, they won't. And if they don't drop it and it continues to go up inflation, they have no other, other option to, but to increase it, which makes it more bullish. It could go absolutely any way. And it's like every six weeks we're getting something change the direction of everything at the minute. Bloody nightmare. Pan New Zealand ADR. Uh, so this looks like potentially is this pound strength coming through? No, New Zealand dollar weakness. This is so a big drop in the New Zealand dollar at the open. Aussie's probably coming down as well. Yeah, Aussie and New Zealand coming down. Uh, uh, 
so I'm just about to trigger another short on my Aussie New Zealand. I've got a sell limit order in this propulsion gap at this high, basically. So I'm looking to get another sell on here. So I'm looking for that movement to continue this correction. That'll be my third uh, position up here. And then hopefully they'll start the drop on that as well. Uh, but there's no reason for this to be uh, rallying. In fact, I'm just going to move that down and get that triggered. I can't. There you go. Third one on. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Uh, US will want low interest rates yet. Yeah. Uh, we're going to need a squatter real estate index soon. <laughs> squatter real estate index soon. Is that bad, is it? Yeah, it's only going to get worse as well. If it carries on, especially if this kicks off in the Middle East, it just war costs so much money. War drains. Look at um, World War II. Yeah, basically, we went bankrupt in World War II. Um, that's why everybody in the 50s was like, no money. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't help uh, the uh, homelessness crisis going into war. What do you think the US will, uh, what do you think, uh, will the US start war as it's their election year and it will affect their stock market? Uh, well, it will negatively affect stock markets. Most, overall, it will. Um, certain sectors, it won't, obviously, but I don't know. Uh, I, I honestly have to hold my hands up at the moment and go, I have no clue what is going on uh, with the fundamentals in anything at the moment um, because there's too much going on. It was really simple. Yeah, this is why I created the bias scorecard. It was really, really simple in the past. You had this and this and this and this affecting the direction of currency. And it was just normal, orderly. Everything was just normal. At the moment, it's not any way, shape or form like that because of the amount of things that are affecting everything. Um, and it's mainly because of this inflation. Uh, it's just the speed of it. Coming out of this COVID recovery, the speed of inflation and the speed of interest rate rise is just something we've not seen before. Um, and, you know, it's, it's like, like I keep saying, it's these things that are lining up that we've never seen line up before. Having this go that fast for 18 months after that has risen at the fastest speed possible up to levels just as a conflict kicks off and we stop having the ability to have oil pumped to our country, which drives this up faster. But we can't do this anymore because that's rising too much. And AI comes in and takes half of these people's jobs away. There's just so many things affecting everything at the minute that is just not what we've experienced, is it? So the markets just don't know which way to go with anything. Um, it's almost as if you need to drop down and look at small time frames and small movements. You almost want to be uh, a daily scalper at the moment. Get in one day. If it goes your way, just grab it because tomorrow is completely different. To, it's always been that way, but tomorrow's circumstances in the world are different to today's. So you can't say, all right, let's buy oil because there's a war going to kick off. And all of a sudden, there'll be somebody that come out and go, hey, I've just discovered this AI bot that can find oil fields. Oh, Okay, brilliant. So we've got unlimited supply of oil now. Oh, well, I've just got this AI bot that's managed to synthesize synthetic oil. So we don't need to have it pumped to us anymore. All oh, right. It's that sort of thing at the moment. Things are just changing like that, where it's just not going to be a change which is short term. It's like completely flipping the way that we do things on its head. Over the last four years, right, the, the sale of electric cars in the UK, it's, I, I don't know anybody that hasn't got one anymore. Yeah, I've got a couple of friends that haven't got electric cars. Everybody else has got an electric car. Four years ago, no one had an electric car. Everyone was using petrol. Petrol stations are like ghost towns. You only go there to pump your tyres up. You don't go there to do anything else. We go there to shop now. All the petrol stations in the UK and our supermarkets. Yeah, because they don't sell petrol anymore. We don't need it. Oil. But then you have the, the restrictions on oil. Yeah. Uh, 
where we haven't got any of it anymore because we've blown all the pipelines up, we'll make it do this. But, you know, this is something that changes within that, in days, doesn't it? The outlook on this thing, it's just, yeah. The world's gone nuts, as Piers Morgan would say. Um... Aussie New Zealand, I'm flat. Did you enter manually? Yep. Uh, well, I've been in. I've, I've I've been in Aussie New Zealand for uh, uh, since January. <clears throat> so I got in down here uh, in February. Sorry, I haven't got out of it. I've never been able to get out of it. Look at it; it's it's gone parabolic. Um, so I got out of a load of it there, and took a load of profit. Um, so I'm scaling in manually to three three positions here um, on the assumption that we are going to now, because of the news on the New Zealand dollar, do the opposite to what we did here. This is a prime example, isn't it, of what I've been saying this morning? Yeah, they don't change the interest rates on the New Zealand dollar. It's as expected, as forecast. Inflation is doing well. Everything's going perfectly. They don't do anything. They tell the market all along, we're not going to do anything. They don't do anything. That's what the market does when it's got an expected result. Absolutely no reason for that at all. Exactly the same thing happened. We got exactly the same news event happening here. And the market does the opposite to that for no reason. There is no reason for that. There's no reason for that. They're not changing their interest rates. They told us they're not changing their interest rates. They're not changing their interest rates. They told us they're not changing their interest rates. Yeah, nothing's changed in Australia. It's just stuff's going nuts, isn't it? It's just, uh, you know, against fundamentals. Yeah, Aussie New Zealand is a weak buy at the moment because there is no fundamental advantage between these two at all. They're commodity pairs. Um, neither of them are doing well. Everybody's stuck. No one said they're going to drop interest rates. Yet the thing just drives 10 ADR for no reason. You know, it's just crazy. But yeah, I couldn't get out of it. So um, I've scaled out of some, as you can see, uh, made a nice profit on uh, the leg from there down. So that was an aggressive drawdown control position. So that paid for some drawdown control. So I'm up, I'm up on the trade overall. Um, but I'm having to get out. So I've taken three uh, positions here, equivalent to the three positions there to get the average up. So now I just need a sort of three ADR move over a period of, you know, a month. You know, this is the thing. Trades never used to take three months to play out. I've had four of them this year. Unheard of. This is what I call a squeeze, something that lasts three or four months. Yeah, I've had four of them. I usually get one, maybe two a year. I've had four this year. It's just crazy. But anyway, uh, I can't complain about it because I can't do anything about it, can you? It's just the situation, isn't it? Got to deal with the situation. Um, I've been in the euro, US dollar since the fourth. Uh, so yeah, I got into euro, US dollar on the 10th of April. Uh, looking for a pullback or a bounce uh, and we got obviously again it's the you know you see all these perfect storms as well it's like one news event on the us dollar or the euro slams it that way and then a couple of days later you get the other one getting the opposite end of the news which slams it twice but equally then you jump up to a four hour chart and look at it and go excellent we're going to get a correction on this which we should do yeah, we get a correction, get a correction, get a correction. We always get a correction. Um, but that's what I'm saying. It's almost like you've got to get out now with as as little as you can. If it's wrong, get out fast, faster than normal, if you like. But um, not even triggering drawdown control. You know, this is the thing on, on these, these trades. I can't even trigger drawdown control because it's not getting, it's getting... Those the movements are like this at the moment, not like this. So uh, the drawdown control triggers at two percent with the EA. Um, individual trades are just taking forever to get to two percent. So it's the 
the rate of drawdown control is so slow as, mo as well at the moment. It's just, you know, it's a pig. The market's a pig at the minute, but you just got to live with it. One of them things. Um, right, so this morning, I'm just going to whiz through all the pairs. Um, we're going to have a look at everything. But to be honest, uh, we do not want to raise tensions in the Middle East, Iran. Sorry, you just shot 330 rockets at Israel. How's that not raising tensions? What I would have done is gone, that was naughty. Don't do it again, please. Not fire 300 rockets. If you, don't, if you do want to raise tensions, that's how you do it. If you don't want to raise tensions, you don't fire 300 rockets at another country. Idiots. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, so I'm just going to pile through all the pairs today. Um, ADRs, we've got a lot of ADRs uh, this morning. Um, mainly yen related obviously so you know we know the story with the yen or with through all the yen pairs to start off with because obviously that's the adrs today um we've got market structure has broken short as we were expecting it to from the us dollar yen rally so um if market structure is going to continue as we are expecting it which is strengthening the japanese yen because of conflict and because of the us dollar yen situation that is what we should be seeing. So these are great short opportunities. Uh, five minute reversal alerts have kicked in already this morning in the retest. So there's your short. That is what we would expect normally to happen um, with uh, these yen extensions. So uh, CAD yen and Swiss yen. Also, uh, sorry, CAD yen is not extended. CAD Swiss. <laughs> I was going to say, is extended. Uh, so A-shaped recovery or V-shaped recovery going in there at the moment. We're back up into the accumulation. But um, so potentially nice looking drop opportunity there on that one. Swiss yen, same thing. We've pushed out the highs now on the Swiss yen as well. So again, yeah, the Swiss franc is very weak at the moment. Um, but it will, if conflict happens, fly. So um, you know what do you do with the information on this we're expecting the japanese to intervene based on the us dollar move we're expecting the swiss franc to fly through the ceiling based on conflict at the moment your choices are not technical or fundamental they are are we going to have a war is the japanese going to press the button it's nothing to do with any analysis price action fundamentals or anything it's a case of will they shoot rockets from israel Will the Japanese press the button because it's not economical to do business with US anymore? Those are the things which are going to drive this up and down. There's nothing else on the planet that controls this apart from those two things at the moment. How do you make a decision on that? You can't control whether Israel files rockets and you can't control whether Suzuki presses the button to power up the Japanese yen. How do you make a decision on what to do with this instrument? You can't. It's physically impossible at the minute. Euro yen, same thing. Um, obviously, we are slightly bullish. Euro. We are definitely bullish now um, based on what Lagarde said next uh, last week. We are dropping the interest rates in June, regardless of what the US dollar does. Big drop on the euro. That is where we should expect this to go. So there's a beautiful short opportunity um, to get in on the euro yen short. Um, I got out of my euro yen last week. Um, again, that was uh, 125 ADR I got out. Where we went, it's mental last week, 250 ADR move on Friday. Pound yen, same thing. <clears throat> Pound is weak at the moment. Yen strengthening. We should be seeing that continue, that trend, uh, especially if the Japanese obviously press the button, which they're not at the moment. Um, so opportunities for shorts again there. And uh, New Zealand dollar yen, obviously, same thing. So New Zealand dollar yen is one of the uh, ones that's holding up a little better at the moment. Um but, I mean, at the end of the day, market structure is now shifted short, likely to come down and test these lows, uh, unless, obviously, the Japanese press that button. Um, but we've got, obviously, this propulsion move, and we are starting to see a little bit of strength coming into that New Zealand dollar, or we were seeing some strength coming into the New Zealand dollar. So there is an opportunity for that to push that way as well. So there's, there's fundamentals for both directions on it. There is no advantage either way. It could go either way depending on what the market does with the with the yen. So, and obviously we know about the US dollar yen, which is stalling out at 150. I'm so tempted just to hit the button. I almost want to turn my entire account into the uh, red and black. 
Because when they do, if they do, it's just going to make so much money. But I have no faith in the Japanese anymore. Um, I've lost faith in you, which is a shame. Um, but anyway, yens uh, all extended. The only other extensions we've got are pound New Zealand. So uh, we've got some weakness in that New Zealand dollar and the Aussie dollar this morning. So it's just about tapped into ADR there. Um, so with, there's your current range at the moment. Um, we're in a contracted range from last week up at those highs. So uh, we'll see where we go at the moment. But last week's movement wasn't particularly exciting, as you can see on this one. So um, 125 ADR would be a much better short opportunity today. Um, but it is pushing up. Bear in mind, we've got lots of news coming out on the pound this week. So bear with me a sec. Just trade over here. Um, so, uh, yeah, Pound New Zealand is extended. Um, the other one we've got extended was the Aussie New Zealand. So, again, this is all to do with this New Zealand dollar move. So, uh, market structure shifted to the downside from here. Um, not very orderly, but that was the news, the interest rates. And since then, we've gone absolutely nowhere. So again, exactly what I've been saying all morning. This is what the market does now. Hey, there's a news event. Let's wait for the next one. All we're getting is just pain. Um, so nice short opportunity. I'm short on it, but um, there's no bias either way on this one. So I can't see why this is running so hard anyway, but it is. Um, and if it continues to do so, then, uh, you know, if we start getting up to these sorts of levels, I'm going to start to scale out and may have to just take a loss on this one. Um, just one of those ones that's moving forever at the minute. Um, so news wise on the Aussies, uh, while we're talking about the Aussies, there isn't much this week apart from that, um, CPI figure for the New Zealand dollar. So if that CPI, um, does go up. That is going to power up. Oh, I say that it should should power up the New Zealand dollar, um, which would be good because obviously I'm sure Aussie New Zealand. So um, I'm hoping we get either a 0.5 or a 0.6 on that on the quarter. Um, we've got unemployment rate for the Aussie. This is not doing as much as it usually does the unemployment at the moment because obviously it's kind of a byproduct of what's going on with inflation and interest rates. So um, businesses are being squeezed into getting rid of staff because costs are too high. So um, that will probably move the Aussie, but um, that's sorry, that's the pound. That's the one we're interested in. Um, that 0.6 on the New Zealand dollar. So that's the only news you got on that this week. Um, ADRs, that's all them done. RSIs, um, there's nothing on the hourlies at the moment to look at. Uh, we had some hourly RSI extensions last week, but they very quickly got undone on Friday. Um, but again, nothing really getting extended enough uh, at the minute. So um, Euro US dollar is your extension um, on the four hour. And we looked at that one obviously this morning already. So there's a big RSI extension there down below that 20 level. In fact, we got down to 11.8. Um, so almost down to that 90, 10 level, which, you know, you just it's unheard of. Yeah, every now and then we get there on some crazy fundamental uh, and it tends to be an exhaustion. So, you know, it's very, you can see, we don't get down to this level very often. Market is incredibly stretched. They will want to take profit on a percentage of that move. Normally, if someone loads, fires a load of rockets, we'll see. Um, but anyway, uh, that's the technicals on it. We should be getting a, a pullback on this. This is the area... Um, that is your previous low. So if market structure is going to hold, that is your low, lower high, lower low. Your lower high could be off of resistance, which is here. So my TPs at the moment, as you can see, are there, which is just below that low. So if we do get a reaction there, and we don't get that propulsion gap filled, which is the uh, US CPI numbers, um, that's where I'm getting out. Obviously, uh, we've got Powell talking tomorrow evening 
um, Powell could easily come out and say, you guys really overreacted to this. You didn't hear us come out in the FOMC statement and say anything about not changing the interest rates in June, did you? You just assumed because of the inflation figures, that is what we were going to do. I think there's an argument for staying in June. Bang, we're back up here tomorrow evening. Yeah. So again, so much that can uh, affect the market at the moment. Pound Gen 150. Uh, Pound Gen 150 ADR. Pounds having a little bit of a push this morning. And obviously with the yen uh, having a massive weak run, uh, that's given that the perfect storm, the pound yen. So that's 150. Uh, so yeah, so those are your uh, ADRs. There's a couple of other, sorry, RSIs. There's a couple of other RSIs in there. The pound US, obviously everything's mainly US based that is hitting uh, RSIs at the moment because uh, the the moves that we had last week which was US dollar strength. So it's taken us there. So we're looking for those pullback moves. So again, that one's already started. It's underway today. Um, but, you know, with this, there's too much going on to really... Pound Swiss ADR. Uh, there's too much going on at the moment to really uh, speculate on whether or not that will happen. So when, when you get a big move like we've had, uh, normally, the market will undo a percentage of it, depending on the number of speculative orders and commercial orders within that initial move. They'll undo the speculative part. The commercial part will stay intact and get added to. So it really depends uh, what happens with conflict, oil, and everything else. You get a massive move where the speculative part is about to unwind, and there is a shift that comes out that says, no, 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 this is definitely going to carry on the speculators will add to their already profitable move and drive it further. So this is why you get flag breaks. So we've had this big move on the US dollar. Um, and in a normal world, you would expect the speculative part of that move to unwind. However, there's every opportunity for that to happen if Powell comes out tomorrow evening and says, you know what, you're right, we're going to go September if you're lucky, might actually do it next year instead. It's going to collapse. Um, and the US dollar yen is going to go through the roof. And then it's a case of what does the Japanese do? Yeah. Too many fighters, there's too many people fighting with each other, isn't there? Everywhere. Everyone needs to calm down. Yeah. The US needs to turn around and go, you know what, Japanese? We've been pushing it a bit far, haven't we? I know it's becoming difficult for you to sell your stuff to us. So I'll tell you what, we'll drop the US for a bit. Is that all right? Yeah, thanks. That's really nice. Israel to go over and have a quick chat with Iran, have a cup of tea and say, yeah, I know we've had our conflicts in the past, but I'll tell you what, why don't we reduce our oil prices to each other to make everybody happy? Drop the inflation around the world. Yeah, not going to happen, is it? Living in a cuckoo land. Um, uh, I've been, uh, sorry, I've spent that one. Champagne Pappy morning, only seven likes? Uh, no, it's not, they don't like me. It's they just don't like the current economic situation. Some people. I see 21. I see dead people. Uh, reload the page, Dougal. Much better. Yeah. Good. Right. Okay. So I'll carry on with analysis. Um, so that's your RSIs. I'm not going to go through all of the RSIs individually because we're going to have a look at everything. But I've covered the uh, yens. So we don't need to go through the yens. Drink. Um, the Aussies. So. Um, there's no real um, movement on the Aussie that is bullish or bearish at the moment. Um, they're in trouble up at that 4.35 rate. They've, they've done a really good job of not having to go too high with their interest rates. Um, their inflation is, is massively high still, along with New Zealand. They're both in the same boat, but they're both really turning tail and running fast now. Don't forget the US dollar did this. Yeah, um, the US dollar... Uh, interest rate differential was, uh, sorry, inflation differential was coming down really quick. And then it went slow, up, and now it's bouncing. So this um, is just part of that drop, bounce, drop, bounce that we get with inflation. Um, <clears throat> so we'll wait and see what happens. But there's absolutely no reason for that to go up at the moment because it's coming down very fast. You do not want to over accelerate because you won't be able to break in time to hit that 2%. So 
that's fine where it is. There's no reason for it to go up, no reason for it to go down. Same with the New Zealanders. It's too high. It's coming down very fast. No reason to go up, no reason to go down, which is why they haven't said they're dropping their rates or they're increasing their rates. They've been totally quiet. There's no fundamental bias either way, sideways. Yeah. So um, at the moment, it's just a case of waiting on both of these. So with all the Aussies, uh, really, you're going to get pushed around by the other currency. If oil prices go through the roof, the Canadian dollar is going to rally like crazy. That's going to drop. Uh, if the war doesn't kick off, the Canadian dollar could go the other way, uh, which means that that will pop. So there's no real reason unless something changes um, for any directional bias on this. So normal market movement yeah, should be absolutely fine. When you get big, strong moves, you'll get the unwinding of those moves, which gives you opportunities to get in and out. It's the normal market movement. So uh, nothing at the moment on that one. Aussie dollar Swiss, again, um, you can trade this in either direction. It's ever so slightly bullish at the moment. But as you can see on the chart, I don't know if you can see on the chart, but I've had nothing but shorts on this. Um, I haven't longed it at all. Um, and I've had three nice successful shorts uh, in the last month. So uh as long as it's pushing up i will get in on those retracements because it's just moving very very nicely but again swiss franc if war kicks off that's probably going to go down there so um doesn't mean you can't long it um because if the the swiss franc does tend to go into a safe haven run it will only be temporary they will unwind it so uh it's not something you need to worry about specifically long term necessarily move on However, um, it will have the possibility of pushing. Every time there's a scare, the Swissy will power up. So, um, it's, again, it's, the fundamentals are against, or the upcoming potential fundamentals are against the current direction. That doesn't really help you in any shape or form, does it? But um, we've had a market structure shift at a double top. Uh, we've broken that low, so we've certainly broken to the downside. So it might be that we start that, or we just go into some kind of wide range, which is absolutely fine as well, because you can trade it in both directions. So it doesn't really matter. But at the moment, no entries on it. There was a potential entry on Friday. It didn't quite trigger for me. Aussie Oli we've covered. Aussie New Zealand, we've covered. Um, expecting this one to roll over. So looking for a pullback on this. Um, so uh, we haven't even got to the 23 retracement yet. Um, hopefully this isn't just going to turn into a flag break without even pulling back to that, le that level. But anyway, um, I'm looking for a nice steady pullback. We've got these highs here, um, which we slammed through very, 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 very easily. So um, there were no other sellers at this level. They all flip long. So that's where I'm kind of hoping we get down to somewhere around about here, sort of around about 38, 50% retracement. So you can see my target is this propulsion gap at the moment. Um, that gives me an exit on the entire position uh, in profit. But I am in profit on the overall position. So if I can get down to here, I might well just shut it anyway and just walk away because I just want to get out of some of these things that we have been squeezing for a long time now. So, um, so Aussie will be and the New Zealand. We've got a couple of news events this week, but what we had last time last week was the New Zealand dollar um, interest rate and inflation. Was it interest rate or inflation? I've completely forgotten which one it was. Um, interest rate, wasn't it? Yeah, at five point five. Of course, it was. Mad. Um, so, yeah, we got the inverse of what we got last time. So last time we had the 5.5, we went nuts. This time we got the 5.5, we went nuts in the opposite direction. Absolutely no reason for it. So if the market is going to continue to act like it's acting at the moment, um, which is irrational, which is what it normally does, but in a much bigger way at the minute, um, we had an irrational move to the upside for weeks after the interest rate stayed the same. We've had an irrational move to the downside this time because the interest rate stayed the same. I don't see any reason why we can't undo that unless something changes. So shorts on that one. Aussie US, totally sideways, as you can see. Um, we obviously had the big move um, on the US dollar. Uh, we are straight back down to the lows again. 
Um, and it's going to be a case of what's going on with the Middle East. It's going to affect the US. So uh, at the minute, we're waiting for Powell. So we want Powell basically to give us some kind of indication uh, tomorrow as to what they're going to do. What he should do tomorrow, ideally, is come out and say, um, we are definitely looking at this date as long as this happens and give the market some clarity. I doubt it'll happen, but that's what we want. Um, and then we will have a good idea of when this move is going to come in the US dollar. But at the moment, it's just knee-jerk reaction, nothing. Yeah, which is, as you can see on this chart, very clearly what we keep getting. Knee-jerk reaction, undo it. Knee-jerk reaction, undo it. Knee-jerk reaction, undo it. Knee-jerk reaction, just all we're getting at the minute. So right now it's a long. Uh, so you had an entry there. As you can see, I'm already out of that one. I took that one. That was a that was a straight in, straight out next day. So in on the RSI extension, out. Um, if you're still in that one, you've taken a second. Get out up here. Um, but yeah, at the moment, again, all waiting for news. Fed will say the situation is fluid. Yeah. This is, and this is part of the problem, isn't it, Franco? This is why we're in the situation we're in with a lot of this stuff, because no one is having any clarity given on anything at the minute. The market is just stuck. Um, we don't want to be long. We don't want to be short. We get a bit of news that looks like we should be long, and then we get a bit of news that looks like we should be short. And we just keep flip-flopping up and down. Or we don't get any news for a while, and the market just gets stuck. It's almost like it's on autopilot. It goes, hey, let, let's go long. Uh, we've had no news. Okay, well, don't do anything until we get any news. Hey, you forgot about us. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's basically what we seem to be getting at the moment. It just goes into these crazy grinds because there is no, no change. Uh, normally what happens is you get that because we get constant change, constant information, information coming through. But anyway, uh, Aussie US. CAD Swiss, um, so CAD Swiss is basically the same uh, pretty much as the Aussie Swiss, really. The Canadian dollar is affected by oil a lot. Um, so if oil prices rally, um, the Canadian dollar will rally. If the Canadian dollar rallies uh, because there's some kind of conflict kicking off, the Swiss franc will rally. Yeah, so if bombs go off, blow up oil lines, the Canadian dollar will rally because oil price is going up, but the Canadian Swiss will drop because the Swiss will go up because everyone put money into Swiss as a safe haven. So this will just get pushed and pulled. Both will become instantly bullish, which means they will go nowhere. So any extensions to the upside, any extensions to the downside at the moment, opportunities for longs and shorts. Uh, we looked at the ends, euros. So euro outlook right now today is bearish. Um, so Lagarde came out last week um, and they basically, as you can see here, um, confirmed a June rate cut. So they said, we are decoupling ourselves. Uh, Canada has just come out. Uh, we are in frequent contact with FX officials abroad. What does that mean? FX officials abroad. Uh, we ceased an Israeli ship. Yeah, we know about that. Um, so, yeah, uh, again, we're, we're talking to them. Please don't push any further is pretty much what they're saying at the moment. What they should be saying is like, Shh, get the swords out, push it any further, and I'm going to chop your head off. That's what they should be saying. Whether or not they are, we'll find out. Um, but as you can see with the euro, uh, we had a confirmation from Lagarde that the uh, rates will be decoupled from the US and we will be dropping in June, regardless of what the US dollar does, because uh, the inflation figure on the euro is too low. We are at 2.4, we're still coming down. When we get to that 2% target, we are dropping into disinflation, which is where we don't wanna be. We want to be at 2% and stable. So they need to get this down, which means that in two months time, that will be dropped. If the next CPI figure comes out, and that drops by something like 0.4, i.e. it accelerates uh, inflation drop, that will happen probably in May, uh, unlikely, but we are looking at June. 
However, obviously, if somebody presses a button and NATO gets involved, da, 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 it all changes. Anyway, we know that. So right now, it's Euro shorts. So um, these, these situations, which is like what the buyer scorecard is for, is so that you can set EAs up to go long only, short only. At the moment, there is an argument for going short only Euros. So you only want to take RSI extensions to the upside. And you only want to take ADR hits to the upside on anything Euro because you want to be shorting it. It looks very much like they are going to be the first major to drop. The Swiss franc's already done it, we know. But um, the euro should now be the first one to drop interest rates, which means that it will start to weaken from an economic perspective and an investment perspective worldwide, which means that the currency starts to lose its value slightly. So all these euros, we should be looking for short opportunities, uh, ideally on them. Uh, there are opportunities for longs, um, but really want to be going shorts so all of them look for um resistance levels monthly weekly upside adr hits and good extensions to the upside rsi extensions to the upside look for opportunities to get in short so looking for those pullbacks on market structure to go down uh, euro swiss swiss obviously weakens dramatically off of the interest rates they dropped interest rates without telling anybody as they always do um, have we got Jordan speaking this week? No. Um, so, again, we're, we're waiting basically to see what happens um, with the Swissy, but the Swissy at the moment is weak and slightly weaker than expected because of obviously the interest rate change. Um, however, obviously, we know it's a safe haven currency and it's the safest place to put your cash in case things go wrong. So there's a potential for it to massively power up on world economic events and, and conflict. So uh, right now, the outlook on the Swiss should be bearish. So right now, you've got a bearish against a bearish, which is nothing. It's a sideways. Yeah. If there's no fundamental bias, long euro, short Swiss, the only thing you want to do is that. If it was short Swiss, long uh, short Euro, long Swiss, the only thing you'd want to do that. If it's short on both or long on both, it will tend to do that because they push and pull against each other trying to make headway. So you get that. So at the moment, Euro Swiss is one of those where you will basically trade it in any direction. You get a signal. So there's a long opportunity there, which I got out of, as you can see, last week. Yeah. So that was the long exit. Uh, short there. Yeah, so just take any direction on this one at the minute, I would, um, I am. Uh, there's no reason to go long, short, or anything else. Euro pound, very much the same. Um, euro now more bearish, but the pound will follow the euro as closely as we possibly can. We are close trade partners. A lot of volume coming into the US dollar yen, is there? Yeah, that was that. Nine thirteen. That news came in. Uh, that's the market just getting reminded that at any point we can kill you all immediately with a nuclear button. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, uh, so yeah, euro pound sideways at the minute. Um, uh, euro, you want to be more bearish than bullish because of that. However, we've got Bailey speaking this week. Um, the pound is not doing as well, fundamentally. Um, we are still coming down at a very decent speed, which is great. We're sitting at 3.4. We're forecast to hit 3.1 this week, which is great. It's on its way. It is still behind the euro. So it's there's a very little difference in it at the minute. Um, we're going to put our rates down a lot faster, I think, than some other countries because we are very, very high and our, in our inflation is very good. Uh, it's coming down very well at the moment. But then again, like I said, so was the US dollars. Not anymore. So we'll see what happens. But um, at the moment, there's not really any bias on this. So it, it's it got the potential to get into the same situation as I got into back in January, where we get a strong move, an entry, and then we go nowhere for a few weeks. We get a bit of news, which drives us, and then we go absolutely nowhere for months because there's no reason to go anywhere. Yeah. If they both start dropping at a quarter of a percent, 
that's what we'll get. The ADR on this is 24. This thing moves 24 pips a day. It's tiny, absolutely tiny. So um, extensions to the upside, short extensions to the downside, long. Uh, if you want to buy us on it, I'd much rather be selling it than buying it, but I don't think it really makes any difference at the minute. Uh, Euro New Zealand, again, New Zealand dollar powering up nicely off the back of the uh, interest rate. Um, staying the same, which is the opposite or the inverse of what we had before. Uh, the Euro week, so this this should be really a short all day long. So any extensions you get to the upside, I mean, there hasn't really been any. I got short on that there. Um, and then I got long on it there. But other than that, I've had no trades really since that because we haven't gone anywhere. We're totally sideways on it. So um, bias is kind of sideways. We're just hitting a nice kind of support area here. Um, and we've double bottomed out of that. But we're hitting resistance to the upside so uh right now you're kind of just stuck here so it will either break that way or that way at the moment because of what the euro is doing over the next few months and what Lagarde said and the june drop much more interested in shorts than longs so any adr hits to the upside double tops yeah weekly levels um look for short opportunities but again taking absolutely ages to get anywhere if you look at where we were you know this is friday thursday wednesday tuesday we're just it's taken an entire week to really just go nowhere yeah this this is what we're seeing isn't it we're not going anywhere intraday there is good move going up and down but that's about it so uh it, it's just not Everything is taking an absolute age to go anywhere at the moment. Uh, Euro US, I'm long at the moment. Um, probably not the best direction to be in at the minute um, with what's going on with the US dollar pushing because we're not pushing the interest rates down until tomorrow. We'll wait and see what is said by the Fed. Uh, and the Euro obviously definitely going to drop interest rates. So this is a bearish bias, definitely. Um, but um, obviously we've got a big stretch, so I would much rather go short from this propulsion move at the moment. We'll see what happens this week. I mean, everything can change. But um, right now I'm long, so I'm holding this at the minute. Um, if you look at where we're potentially dropping to, you're looking at somewhere down here, which is close to parity as well. Actually, no, it's not. It's miles away from parity. Parity's miles away. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, basically, that is your um, next sort of major support. And just above that, actually, which is here. So it's this area here, look. Yeah, we sat off of this uh, one. It's basically 105. We sat off that 105 level. Uh, many, many, many times, uh, and then we we poked our head through it and bought it again. So this is your current support, which is somewhere around about 175 to 250 ADR from where we are at the moment. So it's not a massive. I've got two positions on. If we were to drop that far, I'd probably be in around about five to six um, at a support level. So not the end of the world being long on it at the moment, but obviously the fundamentals in the last 48 hours um last week shifted euro confirmed short us confirmed long definitely confirmed as a short trade isn't it euro short us long you want to be going that way so um yeah again you know this is this problem with uh any kind of trading but mean reversion trading in particular if you get in with your first entry just as it's confirmed that the fundamentals are shifting the other way you could easily get stuck in a squeeze so you have the opportunity to jump ship right now with whatever that loss is so those are the decisions you have to make. Uh, Euro, US dollar, pounds. Um, as you can see, pound odd, certainly sideways at the moment. So Australian dollar has been fairly weak. Pound has been fairly weak. Weak against the week is a sideways. Um, so we have broken down um, over the last couple of weeks, but we've broken back up again. Uh, you know, just not going anywhere. Just dead. 
at the minute. So sideways movement on this one, you can trade it in any direction you like, um, long or short, because it's just not going anywhere. There's no fundamental bias unless somebody comes out from a central bank and said, you know what, we're going to drop interest rates. Then we'll have a fundamental bias. But other than that, we haven't. Pound CAD, sideways. Canadian dollar, all affected by what's going on at the moment. So um, potential spike in oil prices will be a potential spike in Canadian dollar, which will be bearish. Um, if euro drops and Bailey comes out and says, you know what, we're going to stick with the euro when they start dropping, we'll probably drop maybe the month after. It's going to be bearish pound. Um, so it's at the moment, if conflict happens, if we fall in line with the euro, it should be much more interested in shorts than longs. But we'll see. Pound Swiss, um, obviously Swiss franc, um, very, very weak. We know has been very weak in the run-up to the interest rate change. Um, uh, since the interest rate change, we haven't gone anywhere. Uh, so no no directional bias really on this one. It is bullish. Um, it's a lovely tight bullish trend, which you would find as a trend trader very hard to make money out of because any kind of risk reward, you 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 know, each leg you might get a two R if you're lucky out of it. It's just not moving far. It's it's such a slow grind, which is now petered out. Volatility's picked up, volume's picked up, ADR has picked up, direction has not. Yep. So we got massive divergence. Bearish. It's all bearish. So um better to take shorts than longs on it, but uh again, no confirmation. Um, of any fundamentals driving it long or short so it's sideways same with the pound new zealand same as the pound odd um no real directional bias the pound this you know these all these currencies are weak against weak um which gives you nothing so you know we've gone literally we've gone nowhere since uh the middle of march middle of april now we haven't gone anywhere we had a little bit of push up we had a little bit of push down we're back to where we started Totally sideways. So longs or shorts, if you can get any kind of extension. Yeah. There's arguments at the moment for dropping um, indicators down or making indicators more sensitive. Yeah. So uh, drop the RSI, either drop the levels of the RSI or, or increase the sensitivity of the RSI so that you start getting more signals while this market is like this. But, you know, it's always sod's law. The day you do that, will be the day that it gets you into the trade. And that day will be the day that the pound announced the interest rate change is definitely going to be on this date. And you just go off. Yeah. And it's the day that you change this, which is why I very rarely ever change my indicator settings. Uh, because if you try and make them more sensitive to get into more trades because you're not getting many entries, that's when it's going to change. Because you're in a period of contraction. The only reason you're now noticing it is because you've missed the op you haven't found any opportunities. So you go, all right, but because it's been contracting, that's when it's ready to do that explosive move. Um, but we'll see. Nothing moving on that one at the moment. Pound US bearish stance at the moment. Um, we know that the pound is going to be dropping interest rates probably before the US dollar now. Um, so, yeah, shorts, really. Same as the euro US dollar, this one, um, but not as confirmed. So if you look at the euro US dollar and the pound US dollar, they're very similar. Yeah. If you're trading both, you're kind of trading the same thing. So very confluent, these two. So um, at the moment, looking for a pullback on this leg, I'll be watching this area here for shorts. Uh, New Zealand dollar, uh, we know that's got going anywhere at the minute um, very much either. So Canadian dollar will be affected by what goes on with oil. New Zealand dollar at the moment is starting to undo the moves. So slight bullish stance coming in on the New Zealand dollar. Very difficult to trade this in either direction either. Um, so there's no real advantage in either direction on it. Um, we're kind of stuck sort of sideways. So um, whatever you scale into on it, you'll be in it for a few weeks uh, and then you'll be out. So uh, it's just at the moment not going anywhere unless that oil price um, rallies, which obviously then we'll see the Canadian dollar pump. Same with the Swiss. Yeah, weak currency against the weak currency gives you no movement. It's exactly what we've got. 
Um, so you can trade it in any direction at the moment. Take the shorts, take the longs. They're all going to work as long as the thing's got no bias, which it hasn't. So um, I haven't really I've had one short on this this year. Which is there. That's it. So, yeah, no entries. Nothing to do. New Zealand, US, same uh, as the same as the rest. US dollar strengthening up now based on um, the uh, interest rates and inflation. But Powell is going to come out, hopefully, fingers crossed, and confirm tomorrow what their real stance is. Probably not, but if he does, brilliant. Um, so there is an opportunity for this to get completely undone on what Powell says. Um, or it could well rally. Um, very unknown, I think, at the minute, what impact the conflict in the Middle East will have on the US dollar. The US have indicated they're not going to get involved if the Iranians invade or not invade or, or retaliate against Iran. Um, so I'm not quite sure what impact uh, an escalation would have on the US. If NATO get involved, obviously it will have an impact because the US will have to get dragged into it. So um, <clears throat> can't really call it on the war at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's bearish. So right now really is a bearish stance. So RSI extensions to the upside, ADR hits to the upside, hits at previous weekly highs and resistance levels for shorts. Um, and all the US dollars are long. So pullbacks. Looking for longs. Um, US dollar obviously moves on oil as well. So if um, the Canadian dollar rallies on oil, you'll get some movement on the US as well. So this one, this is why we tend to get this. Look, I mean, you can see by my trades on this chart, it's been an absolute dream, the US dollar CAD. Um, literally either straight in, straight out, or two entries maximum on every RSI extension. And I don't really see any reason for that to change. The fact that we've broken out doesn't mean that this thing's suddenly going to go into a massive trend. It means it's broken out of this range, but it's probably just going to form another one. There's no bias either way. They're not going to change interest rates out of sync with each other. Uh, their inflation is moving in sync. Their unemployment is moving in sync. They both um, make a lot of money out of oil. So business as usual, as far as I'm concerned, sell the highs, buy the lows. Just keep doing it. Uh, until one of them says, this is what we're doing with interest rates. Uh, US dollar Swiss, uh, I've got shorts on this one at the moment. Uh, again, another one I've been stuck in um, because we got stuck. Just got stuck. Then we had a news event. And then we got stuck. Now we've had a news event. Guess what? So there's been literally, since I got into this in February, there's been two news events. Other than that, the thing doesn't move. So uh, war will affect it with the Swiss franc powering up. Brilliant for me. Uh, Powell coming out and saying, actually, I think we're probably talking about June, maybe now July. Probably not too bad either. So there's for me, being short on it, I'm not that worried. However, I am in DD on it, so I am going to be scaling out of a little bit if it pushes up any higher than last week's high. Um, but I suspect we've got this nice bull move, which they will probably try and hold, but there's no fundamental reason to go much different on this one at the moment, especially with the Swiss franc because of the safe haven runs. So, um, stuck, but this propulsion move is where I would expect us to get back to. I'm only 175 ADR away from a break even on it, but you know, this is the issue at the minute. What you do is you get a news event and then you just get nothing. You don't get the pullback. And the pullback is where we make our money. They're just not doing it at the minute. So stuck in that one. And we know about the US dollar yen, which uh, decided it didn't fancy that news. And it's just gone straight back up again. There we go. That's everything. Conflict in the Middle East. Oil prices go up. Inflation goes up. No drop in interest rates this year. No, nope, that's exactly it. That is the trouble. That is the potential, um, which is why I've just bought oil. And I will be adding to oil as much as possible and holding it until we get to the Ukraine high, which is all the way up here.
In fact, I won't hold it until the Ukraine high. I'll probably hold it to there. 92. 92 to 93 a barrel. Um, sorry, that's, what am I talking about? That's not the Ukraine high. I was going to say, it wasn't 92 a barrel, was it? It was more like 100 and something a barrel. There we go. So that's where I will hold it to. Look how fast we get there. If it kicks off. Yeah. 24 hours, 48. One week, basically, in it. So that's uh, a week and a day from there to there. 330, 10 ADR in a week. That's what happens. And that's what happens to... So this... So... Um, Rumour about war kicking off. War kicking off. Yeah, so the rumour, you buy the rumour. Yeah, or in this case, you buy the observation. It's kicking off already, isn't it? So uh, kicking off in the Middle East. You, you do not want to do anything but buy oil in, in this situation. Yeah. If we're going to start to trend now, as we did back previously when the Ukraine conflict was building you're just looking for flag breaks and you're looking for resistance levels to get out pull back get back in just keep doing rinse and repeat but all eyes on financial juice Bank of Japan, we may put less emphasis on inflation in policy setting. A bit cryptic. Quite sure what they mean by that. Uh, we didn't agree on the Israel strike with the US or anyone else. Yeah, we know that. You do what you want. Uh, we shouldn't be playing with the settings in the first place. Nope. Settings of what? Uh, do you plan only going long or short when fundamental rates start to create trends? Yes. I'm, I'm almost. I. <laughs> I'm almost there. The uh, basically with my on my VPS, um, I have set my RSI extensions now to eighty twenty. So um, my my hourly RSIs are the eighty twenty levels. So we don't often get to eighty twenty. Uh, well, we do we do get to eighty twenty, but it's less less regular, isn't it? Look, so we had you know one instance there, just about touched it there. We had one instance there, just about touched it there. So um, I've set my EA up basically. To only trade when we are we've had a massive push, um, because I at the moment I just want to be a little bit more risk averse because this thing is just all over the place. There's too much going on. So what I want to do is set that fundamental bias when we've got a fundamental bias because we haven't got a fundamental bias at the moment. We're sitting through this. We're having to just sit through this for weeks on end on all sorts of stuff. Um, so I'm interested in when we get up to these levels. If you get there, take a trade for me automatically. Brilliant. Other than that, I'm just going to manually hit the button when I see something decent, but probably in line with where I think it's going to go. So, you know, you're, you're looking at the Euro US, for example, as an example. Um, I've got a long on it at the moment, which the EA took here automatically because it was a 20 extension. Then we had another news event, that, you know, two days after, which went in the same direction. So got that extension. So that's fine. I'm in this one. And that's no problem taking that. Um, once I'm out of this trade, so let's say this pushes up on Powell tomorrow and I'm out up here. I will be looking for short onlys on it. So if we get that, the EA will get me in as it did there and take a trade automatically for me, which is fine. But other than that, I'm not going to be getting in long on the Euro US because the moment the fundamentals are very much bearish. Yeah. So I will be looking for entries myself. So if we, let's say, pushed up 
into the propulsion gap and got all the way up to there and we went 125 ADR, for example, on that day, I'll just go, I fancy a short here. It won't be an RSI extension. It will just be because I fancy a short um, because the fundamentals are, are that way. But the, the problem at the moment and the reason I built the bias scorecard is to give us this information. I built this just as we went into the 18-month interest rate rally. And it, it kind of got thrown out the window. In a normal world where everything is just normal, um, we haven't got wars going on, we haven't got huge inflation rises because of conflict, we're not coming out the back of pandemics, all that sort of stuff, everything, you know, just the world is ticking along as the world normally ticks along. This is exactly what you want. So if the euro's interest rates are higher than the New Zealanders' interest rates, there is a bias to go long the euro because you earn more money with the euro than you do with the New Zealand. If their inflation is stable and New Zealand's um, inflation is coming down, there is a reason to go long on the euro and the New Zealand. If the euro's GDP is doing well, the country is doing well, they are making money, that will encourage investment into the euro, which is bullish. If the GDP isn't or is dropping in New Zealand, that's the reason to buy it. If unemployment rates are coming down in Europe and in New Zealand they're not, that's a reason to buy the euro, which is why we have the buy a scorecard. It says, all being well, if everything carries on as it is, the euro should go up against New Zealand dollar. The problem we have at the moment is everybody's interest rate has gone up at the same time. Everybody's inflation has gone up at the same time. Everybody's GDP has come down at the same time and everybody's unemployment is going up at the same time. Yeah. So there has not been any fundamental bias, any reason to go, I wouldn't want to long that or I wouldn't want to short that because everything is screwed and nothing isn't screwed. We are going to start to unscrew everything, but it's taken 18 months to unscrew it. It's going to take 18 months probably to screw it back in before we get to that point where we can safely say that this thing is going to actually have any benefit. So at the moment, you've got to um, go with what this tells you what's happened. At the moment, the interest rates, inflation, GDP, and work. So these are like indicators. They tell you what's happened in the past. Yeah, what the rates are now, what's happened previously. What we need to do is look at what's happening in the future. If Euro are saying we're going to drop the interest rates in June and everyone else is saying we're either going to stay the same or increase our interest rates, you want to do nothing but short because in the future, it's coming down. We don't know when in the future, but that's what we do know. At the moment, if Powell comes out on tomorrow evening and says we're looking at September, Euro, US dollar, short. Sure. If he comes out and says June, Euro, US dollar, ever so slightly short, but a bit, bit more neutral. If he comes out and says June and then the Euro CPI figure pops up in a couple of weeks, again, it's neutral. And this is the problem with reading this market at the moment from a fundamental perspective is this thing is changing up and down too much. They are saying things about this too much. Every few weeks, we either get an interest rate figure or an inflation figure, or an unemployment figure that shows us a different picture to what we had two weeks ago, which is why we're getting this. Because it's like, you know, somebody saying to you, uh, you know, you want to do this, and then you want to do that, then you want to do this, then you want to do that. All you're going to do is you're going to go like that, because no one's consistently saying you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this. Because every two weeks, something flips. Yeah. And we suddenly get, you know, this this weekend is a perfect example. Euro. Excellent. We got told last week by Lagarde that the euro is coming down. We got told by the Fed that probably going up and then 300 rockets shot from one country to another. That doesn't mean anything anymore because the UN now might have to get involved and NATO might have to get involved, in which case that euro outlook for dropping interest rates isn't going to happen this year. Why? Because inflation will go up. Why? Because we're just bombing in the oil fields. But we might not do that. So every time we get one piece of news that says do one thing, you get another piece of news that says, actually, no, do the other thing now. It's impossible to read it. From technical perspective, 
you get to a point where you go, right, when we hit a support, normally we bounce off of it because there's a load of limit orders sitting there. Those limit orders may be there or may not be there. But when you get to it, the limit orders will trigger and then a news event will go and drive it through there. And then everybody that's that way flips short. And that's nothing new. That's been happening forever. But I don't think the limit orders are sitting in the market as much as they used to be because they don't know where they should have those limit orders because every week the outlook changes on the direction that you should be going. So we're getting a lot more overshoots and we're getting a lot more of these types of sideways movements, which are great when you're just position trading long and short. You know, US dollar CAD, as I said, so many easy trades on it. And then you get something nuts. The limit orders we know were sitting here for two months. Now they're not. Literally because of one news event, which is fine. It's a fundamental shift, but it's a fundamental shift through a level. But there is still no real directional bias on it, is there? Because these guys both do the same thing. These guys are both affected by oil. And when the US dollar moves, the CAD moves. When the CAD moves, the US dollar moves. There's still no bias. So which way should you be going on it? Neither. Both. Yeah, it's just there is, you know, it's just no help anywhere, is it, a minute? But uh, <clears throat> that will change. But it's, I reckon, you know, it took 18 months to get here. Um, and I think we're probably going to take 18 months to get back. So, you know, you're talking two years before we get back to a normal market, which is worrying, isn't it? But we've had a lovely boom. You know, last year was one of my best years because we knew what to do. It was certain interest rates are going up. Why? Inflation's going up. Every time that ticks up, that goes up. We knew what to do. And we knew how fast they told us. We knew. We got told by the Fed, Bailey. Everybody came out and said, interest rates are going to change on this by this percent. And what happened? They changed by this on that date, exactly as we got told. Read it like a book. Can't read anything at the minute. Because every time they say they're going to do something, it changes. Literally two weeks later. It's just painful. But uh, <clears throat> when we get that start, when this starts to drop, we know what's going to happen. It's going to continue to drop. So it will be the speed of drop. So if the US goes and they drop, and the Aussies say, <clears throat> We're not there by a long shot yet. It's going to be three to six months. You know you do nothing but sell the US dollar and the, against the Australian dollar. Yeah, Aussie US is a buy. Yeah, it's simple. When we know. But at the moment, we've had nearly a year of, of no, don't know. No one knows. Banks, institutions, don't know. Just don't know because they won't tell us. But that's fine. So it's going to change. And it's imminent. However, this weekend possibly screwed the whole thing, isn't it? Yeah. All of a sudden, we got no oil again. This is what happened with Ukraine. This is why the oil prices went through the roof. This is why inflation went through the roof. Because we lost the ability to purchase energy. It became four times more expensive. Same thing's going to happen again. You have to wonder if all the oil barons are just sitting there going, fire missiles at him. Make us money. Who knows? Uh, <clears throat> uh, right, that's it. I've answered all the questions. Oh, brilliant. 77 people. Nobody's wanting to ask anything. That's good. Uh, so I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I've got nothing else to really discuss today. Um, beautiful move on the DAX today. Nice, easy break. Nice, easy. Well, yeah. Nice, easy break on the, on the DAX. Again, 4R. ADR hit on the DAX already, look. Um, I just got in and out uh, very quick. Scalping, low risk. Same with that one. In, out, done. Um, going nowhere on that one, though, this morning. So um, I'll wait and see what happens with uh, news. But basically, just keep your eyes peeled on news at the moment. We're waiting for... I mean, you won't hear from the Bank of Japan. It'll either happen and then you'll go... Oh, or it won't. Um, but again, we're just getting noise out of these guys and no 
no moves, all bark, no bite. Um, and this is really what we're waiting for now. Um, any confirmation from Israel as to what they're going to do? I mean, it's unlikely they're going to announce, oh, yes, we're going to shoot 350 rockets back at you. They're not going to let them know, are they? It's just going to happen. Always happens overnight as well, doesn't it? So um, we're just wanting talk um, and wanting to hear. So uh, everything, again, is going to be very, very jittery this week. Um, waiting for stuff and just poised, poised for a lot of things to happen, um, but not a lot. Oh, uh, I've also, um, I'm going to do a little experiment. So we've been talking a lot just before I go, and um, we've been talking a lot about sentiment, um, over the last, uh, Sort of week view bits and pieces talking in discord about it um so the retail sentiment the idea behind retail sentiment is that you don't trade in line with the retail crowd however the retail crowd do get it right sometimes and um it's always been a kind of uh contrarian sort of view with retail sentiment. So if the US dollar CAD, if 91% of them are short on it, you should be buying the US dollar CAD. Yeah. Goes up. So that's normally what happens. Now, the whole reason behind everybody thinking you should do the opposite to this is because all the Forex brokers say that 90 or 80 or 70 or 60 or whatever the percentage is of people that trade with them lose money. Everybody assumes that that's retail. Yeah. Institutions also trade through brokers. So when people look at things like um, my FX books, retail sentiment, uh, <clears throat> they actually show you the profitable percentages and things. So I was thought I'm going to do a little experiment on this. So I'm going to set up two separate accounts. Um, one is going to trade in line with sentiment and one is going to trade against sentiment. And it's literally going to every morning take a trade in the direction of or against sentiment. Yeah. So US dollar CAD, for example, this morning, the EA would have gone, they're short, I'm going to go long on one account. And on the other account, it's going to go the opposite direction. And, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use any stop losses on the accounts. I'm basically going to get out at the end of the day. So you would expect if these guys are shorting this that the market will push against them so if i get in at eight o'clock in the morning i'd assume that the us and the uk session will have moved the price against the market against the sentiment so i'll just get out at the end of that day so it's going to be a very simple timed entry timed exit yeah and it will either make a profit or it will make a loss so i thought i'd run a little experiment not so much to see what is the most profitable way of trading with sentiment um but more for what is the strike rate on a daily basis so if you were to look at these guys being in that direction how many days when these guys are saying to do that does it actually do the opposite i.e how many profitable days are there you can then go right well if there's a 65 percent of the time the market actually closes higher than it opened when these guys are in the opposite direction, you can then look at ways to intraday trade that using pullbacks, using breakouts, using whatever you want to, using standard risk reward ratios, whatever you want to do. But I thought I'd look at it and see if I can get a strike rate. So the best way to do that is to get two accounts, stick a grand in each, and basically get it to take a trade every day on every single pair. Uh, and I thought what I'll do is I'll say, if they're above 75 or below 25, We'll take a trade. If it's somewhere in the middle here, there is no bias. So uh, I won't get in. So a bit like this. Actually, this works on uh, this works on 60, 40, this table. So I could do it on that, couldn't I? So if 60% of the market or more is shorting, we'll buy it. If 60, if 40% uh, of the market is the opposite way, or rather 60% of the market is the other way, we'll sell it. Um, so I've got an EA which basically get, gets sentiment. 
Um, so I'm just going to recode that EA basically to just do this as an experiment. So I thought it'd be a really interesting fact finding mission and just look at it on a daily basis and just see what the strike rate's like. Because um, I've built EAs in the past to trade sentiment. Every EA that I built in the past to trade sentiment was trying to trade against retail. It may be if retail actually do make money uh, that we should be trading with it. However, when you look at price action, uh, it always goes the opposite way to this. So if you get a sustained period of time where they are long or short on something, the market will always go the other way. So it's how it gets there is what I'm interested in. How many days does it actually go in the direction or against the direction? So I thought I'd try a little experiment and just stick a couple of grand into a couple of, a couple of accounts just to trade small risk, um, just to get an indication, to see if there's an edge there on literally blindly going with or blindly going against. Because we don't know what's going to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. And obviously, bear in mind, there's news events in here as well. So US dollar CAD, if 71% if of the market is short on the US dollar CAD the day before FOMC, they're gambling, aren't they? Because on FOMC, it could go 200% in that direction or 200% in that direction. Nothing to do with these guys, is it? Or is it? We'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, we'll find out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on building that EA out um, this week uh, and see if I can get that experiment set up be really interesting to just see and the idea behind just taking a timed entry is we know the market starts moving with london so uh i'll probably get in at seven o'clock in the morning i'll get in the opposite direction of retail and the direction of retail and then let the day play out yeah so today the market is right aren't they 91 percent of them are short so far they're right what will they be by the close of business today they were really wrong on Friday. Yeah. Why do you think 91% of the market is short in it? They're all trying to mean revert this play, aren't they? So yeah, interesting. So I'm going to do that as a little experiment. In your opinion, uh, it's all orchestrated. In my opinion, it's all orchestrated. What is? Oh, what, all, uh, everything. Well, yeah, probably. Probably. Who knows? It doesn't matter, does it? This is, this is the thing about, um, you know, conspiracy theories about how things move, why things move, you know, the whole ICT IPDA thing, the interbank price delivery algorithm. Uh, whether you believe in it or not has absolutely no bearing on whether you make money in this market at all. What you think, what you believe in has nothing to do with making money. When you press a button, the odds are 50-50. I don't care if you believe it's conspiracy or don't believe it's conspiracy. That doesn't affect the way the market moves and the direction the market moves at all. So it doesn't matter, which is why I've never bothered about uh, any theories that work on anything but what I can see on the chart, because that I know is fact. And this is why systems and strategies are based on historical data always because if you can see something that happens on a regular basis yeah over and over again across any instrument it's fact why it happens whether you believe it's because of the moon phase whether you believe in a conspiracy between five bolty billionaires whether you believe it's institutional price delivery algorithms created by a guy in America, or whether you believe uh, it's bank limit orders ready to trigger at that level, or whether you believe it's exhaustion and profit taking. It doesn't matter what you believe. The fact of the matter is it happened three times. Fact. I don't care why. It doesn't make any difference. Why? If I knew why, would it help me? No. And the reason it wouldn't help me is because sometimes it doesn't work. So it doesn't help me, does it? It's either going to or it's not. The why hasn't got any help. Why do they do that? It's because limit orders trigger by central banks. Why didn't it do it? Because there weren't any limit orders by the central banks. Unless I know that information at that level, it doesn't help me the fact that it's done it in the past, does it? 
Why did that happen there? Well, it's because every time it got there, my dog barked. That time, my dog didn't bark. Believe me or not, I don't care. What happened is, it did it. Why? Who cares? Doesn't matter, does it? The odds are it will or it won't. Black, white, I-O, binary, 50-50. That's what happens. When you press the button, it does what you want or it doesn't. It doesn't matter what you think, does it? This is the thing. And I, it, take, it took me a long time to remove the looking for the holy grail from my head. And this is what you're doing when you're system hopping, is you're looking for that system or strategy that works more often than not. You can't find it because every time you think you found it, I can show you 50% of the time it hasn't happened. But you will close off to those ones because it does it 50% of the time. Yeah. It's random, totally random. This news event here was random. It could have been positive or negative news. Why? I know. I couldn't know in the future before it happened, could I? In the past. So it doesn't matter, does it? So if you try and trade news and you come up with a system that goes, well, the last three times that the interest rate dropped, so therefore this time it probably will do that. Because I've got six or seven instances in the past where it's done it. I can show you the three instances in the past where it didn't. This one will either become number seven in your favor or number four in my favor. The odds are one and zero. It's 50-50. Yeah. Don't know how, it doesn't matter how many times. Again, you know, I can go back on this RSI and I can show you the odd instance you get to 90 and 10. I can show you three times it's happened on one chart and it's never done anything but do that. You will go and find another chart where it did that and it RSI dropped, but price did that and it was wrong. Now, because it's done it three times on my chart and it's never not done the opposite, does that mean that when it gets to 90 next time, price will have to come down, or does it mean it could go up? Of course it can. It can do both. Everything is 50-50. Yeah? It doesn't matter what your belief is, and this is why the market works. If you didn't have somebody believing the opposite to what you believe, this thing wouldn't move, because every time you want to buy it, there's got to be a guy on the other side that disagrees with you, and he wants to sell it. Otherwise, it doesn't move. Everybody's got to have off differing opinions. Otherwise, there is no market, is there? Same as apples and pears. You walk into a, any market in the world that sells fruit and vegetables. Yeah, you walk in there and there's a guy selling apples for one pound an apple. If you don't agree with the price being one pound, you won't buy his apple. You walk over to that one over there that sells the apples for 90 peas and you buy his apples because you agree with him. You don't agree with him. That's what a market is. It's an offering and an acceptance of price. Totally random as to how many people are offering and how many people are accepting at any point in time. Why wars start off? Everyone lives happily together for ages and ages. And then you have a disagreement. Then it turns into a scuffle. And before you know it, you've broken out into World War Three. Yeah. Three weeks ago, it was absolutely fine. This weekend, it's all going wrong. Doesn't matter what you think, does it? I'm not having to go at you, Ryan. I'm just saying, you know, the, I have conspiracy theories, theories about all sorts of stuff in this market. Uh, you know, my, my, my main theory is limit orders, bank limit orders. Yeah, and that proves my concept. Yeah, you give it to somebody else and he'll say, have you not heard of a stop run, you idiot? Of course that's a stop run. Look at it. It went above the market by 10 pips. It's a stop run. Clearly there, the spread would have widened by three pips. It's a stop run, you idiot. No, it's the limit order sitting at the bank. It's just that there was a few more buyers there. They squeezed through a few more pips, but they still turned tail and ran. No, 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 you're wrong. Does it matter who's wrong? We're both right, aren't we? Because it sold from that level. I don't care why. Believe me, don't believe me. I don't care. Uh, I've been doing some uh, backtesting on the PTEA with RSI on higher timeframes, H4 and daily with large ADR spacing. Uh, I haven't done any testing on higher time frames at all with it yet. Mark, you've dangled a carrot there and you haven't told us the results. <laughs> is it good or is it bad? Uh, are you going to do all pairs or just the bottom three? 
Aren't you going to do all pairs or just the top bottom three? I don't know what you mean, Kennelly. Uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't want to know how your dog did that by barking. Doesn't matter, does it? The fact is, my dog barked and price dropped. Doesn't matter how my dog did it. My dog has a direct line to Bailey, the Bank of England. Uh, when he barks, Bailey does. Uh, can you ask your dog to bark about Tesla stock? No, she doesn't do stocks. She only does Forex. She. Oh, she's that's broken up, look. I was talking about the dog. And now she's outside my door, shaking. I can hear her collar, that's all. She's not just sitting there shaking. She's outside the door, shaking her head. On my new EA, am I going to do all pairs or just the top, bottom three? For the retail sentiment, uh, it will be... Based no, it, it, all pairs. It'll be all pairs, based on bias. Yeah. So if sentiment is, I, I I'll have to pick a number. Uh, I was going to go with seventy five, twenty five. So if uh, yeah, it would just be if it's above. Yeah. I mean, that's the, the whole point. of The experiment is if seventy five percent of people. Are shorting something let's go long and let's short with them and see what the best thing to do is see if there's an edge i know what the answer is going to be um i think anyway because i can see it on a chart i i know it it's plotted um uh yeah, I can tell you, I can show you what happens. Aussie dollar yen, look. Retail sentiment. They start to go long, price goes down. They start to go short, price goes up. Yeah, this is a really bad example. Right, so starting here, yeah. They all start to go short, price goes up. So they all start to go long, price goes down. So they all start to go short, price goes up. They carry on shorting it, price carries on going up. So they decide to quickly go long, price comes down. Then they go sideways. Then they all start to short it, so price goes up. Then they go, shit, we're wrong, everybody. Let's go long. And then the price comes down. Yeah, I know for a fact this is plotted. This is, this is fact. When the market sentiment is one direction, the market goes the other way. What I'm interested in is how. Because I've tried to find an edge in sentiment trading by in at the start of the day, wait for pullbacks, take breakouts. I've tried so many strategies using this. All this is is a trend filter. This is a trend filter, basically, which says US dollar CAD, you are only looking for longs. Yeah, because these idiots are short. So you need to be longing it. So use, this is a moving average. It's exactly the same as a moving average. The difference is it changes very regularly. Yeah. So you got 91% of the US dollar are short on the US dollar CAD right now. Yeah. If the US dollar CAD has a news event which drives it 300% of ADR today, that number will change within hours. Yeah. So news events screw this up. I know that. I know news events screw it up. So basically, you are, you kind of want a news filter on it as well. But um, but I know I know that for a fact. You can see it's plotted. IG plot this information. Look, these guys have been buying all that time. Market's going down. Oh, I know everyone. Let's short it. Okay, we'll go long. Oh, hang on, let's buy it. No, we'll go short. Oh, okay, well, let's short it. We'll go long. Yeah, this is what the market does. It does totally the opposite to the retail sentiment. Is it better to go with them or against them if you just bought it in the morning and closed it in the afternoon? I.e., how many percentage of days when these guys are in one direction or the other does the market go the other way? Look, they are selling it here, selling, 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 selling. We've got a buy day, a bear day, a buy day, a buy day, a buy day. That's what I'm interested in. There was four bull days and one bear day. 
while they were selling it, you should have been buying it. How many days, if I bought at the beginning of the day and closed at the end of the day, would I have been right? What's the strike rate on that? Good. That's what I want to test. I know that. I, I, know, I know what happens. Hey, guys, let's sell it. No problem. We'll go the other way. Oil. See what they're doing on oil at the moment. Oh, we've not got oil. I thought we had oil. US dollar yen, look. They're selling the crap out of the US dollar yen at the moment. It's off the top of the chart, look. They can't even chart it. It's that wrong. But they are right. This is the thing. This is the thing with this, this sentiment thing. They're right to be short on this because the Japanese have been saying they're going to press the button and nuke the US dollar. So they are right to be that, aren't they? But they, this, they're not losing money. I'm not wrong on my position in drawdown because I'm wrong. I'm losing money at the moment because the Japanese haven't done what they said they were going to do. Yeah, it's not a case, you know, this is what sentiment is. Everybody is thinking the same way as I'm thinking at the moment. This thing's massively extended. It's at all-time highs. We haven't been here before. And the Japanese keep saying they're going to kill the US dollar if the US dollar pushes them any further. They just haven't bloody pressed the button. So that sentiment is correct. You should be sure. From a fundamental perspective in the fact that the Japanese have said they're going to do something. You know, it's, it's one of those, it's, it's an interesting one to, to analyze. Look at this. Perfect. US dollar Swiss. Okay, let's start short in the US dollar Swiss. New problem. These are four-hour charts, by the way. Uh, so yeah, I thought I thought we had oil. I was interested to see what their positioning is on oil today. There we are. Look. Market has just started to long the crap out of oil. Correct. Why? Not because there's a fundamental, a technical level or anything, but because there's a load of missiles flying around. And if they blow up an oil field, it's going up. That is speculative trading. That is sentiment. My thoughts are oil is going up. I've set up an account specially just to buy oil because I think it's going up. If a war happens, if a war doesn't happen, it's coming down. So that speculation is not wrong because of anything, but the guys didn't press the buttons on the missiles. Uh, I just want to test it. I think it'd be a really interesting experiment. And because I'm hedging, um, if it goes up by more than it comes down, I'm going to make money on both accounts anyway as well. So maybe profitable. Uh, I had good results. I was looking at it for diversification. I've had to adjust profit targets, ADR, spacing, and risk. Reducing pain from squeezes. Yeah, your four hour will reduce the pain from the squeezes, although it's harder to get out of four hour moves as well. Daily uh, is a very good one. So if you use daily RSI extensions, um, if you want a strategy that very rarely fails to make money, US dollar yen is probably not a great example uh, at the moment, but um, if you take every extension above 80 on the daily time frame, um, you will find it quite difficult not to make money. Massive bearish diverse, uh, divergence there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very, 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 very good uh, time frame to trade. That ADR experiment that I did with the um, ADR distancing from 72 moving average, uh, had a really good edge at six ADR. So when we get six ADR away from the 72 moving average, if you get in short, uh, virtually all the currencies made money. There was occasions where it didn't, and they would have been occasions like this where you got into fundamental squeezes. But um, yeah, so there's there's better edges on higher time frames, definitely. But you're going to get a lot less trades. So what you, what you need to do really is just risk. So any any testing you do where you get positive results on higher time frames, yeah, increase the risk 
double the risk and then look at the monetary return, then double the risk again, and then look at the monetary return and look at the drawdown because you are going to get a lot less entries on H4 and D1. It's a lot harder to get in. Yeah, but look at it. Oops. Um, yeah, bang. It's an elevator shaft. There isn't a there isn't a buy there to look at, but two trades in eighteen months, hundred percent strike rate, virtually no drawdown. Brilliant, they're really good. But you do not want to put zero point two five percent risk over half an ADR on these. You want to put two percent risk on these, and you want to be doing drawdown control at two percent with a third of it. Yeah, so you need to adjust. It's a totally different way of, it's an investment time frame. So you need to be looking at um, how you get in and out. Yeah, so if you look at the 80 levels on here, for example, on the pound CAD, you only had one there. Yeah, that trade there. You had one, right, so you got into a squeeze here, even still look. So you had one there. You'd have been squeezed in that, look, still on the 20. If you had one there, you'd have been out on that or in three or four trades on that one. One there, one there, one there. One there. Obviously, that one there. One there. So yeah, very, very high strike rate. But very, very low number of trades. You know, this is when you go down onto the low time frames and start looking at those massive extensions on the low time frames. You do get them every now and again, where you get up to the 90, the 90 tens on the 15 minute time frame. They are also very good. But you'll get an awful lot of fundamental news events. So if you're going to do it on low time frames, you've really got to get a news filter in your head every morning every or every week, wake up and go, okay, so I'm not going to trade the CAD this week. Turn off all CAD pairs because this CPI number could send it into an absolute, like it did on Friday with the US dollar or last week with the US dollar. Absolute squeeze for days on end. So just got to adjust uh, how you uh, <clears throat> how you view risk on different time frames. Low low time frames, very low risk. High time frames, higher. Benefit from larger swings, yeah, and also targets longer. But that's where your real skill will come in. Holding, yeah. Forget Liz Truss there, but. Um, you know, two weeks you had to hold that for. Oh, sorry, two months. Two months. Could you hold a trade for two months with it going up and down, up and down, up and down? It's not for the faint-hearted. It's a very difficult time frame to trade. I've traded daily, and I trade daily on the S&P, or used to. Uh, very hard to hold stuff. Because your PL gets to, there's a point in your PL you get to where you go, oh, that's a lot of money. And you look at it and you go, yeah, but it's got so much further to go, but that's a lot of money. And you either do one or two things you break even, stop loss. What does it do? Breaks you even and then goes to where you thought it was going to go to. Uh, or you take it and it just carries on going. They're both negative. Both have a negative impact psychologically on you, don't they? Anywho, uh, right, that's all I've got today. So I'll be back tomorrow. So this week, uh, live rooms are going to be alternating. So uh, this morning, tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday morning, Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, not for any reason other than that's how the news sits this week. So you're going to be trading the CAD CPI tomorrow afternoon. Uh, the pound CPI figures come out at 7 o'clock. So we'll look at seven. We'll look at that after uh, U.S. unemployment claims on Thursday, and then the pound retail figures. Well, there's nothing much happening on Friday, so I'm just going to do a morning session on Friday.
Uh, would the sentiment trades work well with ADR reversals? Uh, yes. Um, possibly. I've tested that. So I uh, the sentiment EA that I built, I don't even think I've got it in here. Um, I call it retail sentiment. I can't remember what I called it. O P Q R. R I haven't got it in here. I'll have to get out. Um, <clears throat> but the the E A that I built uses the sentiment data on my site basically and drags that in as an indicator. Uh, and I tested um, weight and only take ADR reversals against retail yeah the problem is it very rarely ever happens because it does go against retail um so you don't get those pullbacks what i haven't tested which is on my list because i've got this little list of entry criteria that i wanted to test with it uh, is uh 50 retracement so a 50 percent adr move so uh, when we open up on the day so us dollar cad today great example yeah so retail sentiment for the US dollar CAD at the moment, the entire world is short on it, right? So you want to be taking a long. So wait for it to pull back 50% of ADR and go long. And then close it out at the end of today, wherever it may be. If retail's right, you make a loss. If retail's wrong, which then most of the time they are, we know that, we've just shown the, shown the charts on IG, they go the wrong way. You'll be right. So. 50% retracement. So I might test that. I tested ADR. I tested uh, five minute RSI extensions to the downside, 15 minute RSI extensions to the downside. I tested uh, one hour bullish engulfing entry. I tested all sorts of stuff when I built that EA to find the edge of how to get in. And I couldn't find a profitable way of using it. It was right a lot of the time. But when it wasn't, it was wrong really wrong so um i only tested it with stop loss based strategies i think i think i did actually do a, a few tests with time of day strategies as well but um but i'm going to test it time of day because you know what you want is you want to grab these big moves as well yeah when they happen so if you get news which kills retail and it is you know it's just random isn't it at the end of the day the news is random but if retail says I'm shorting the crap out of it. And a news event comes out and goes against retail. I'll have it. I'm not going to set a target at one and a half R. I think that's the problem. I, the, the previous testing I did, all the strategies I had, I was testing uh, risk reward ratios. And we know they don't work because we have things like support and resistance, which get in the way of risk reward. Uh, so it's very hard to make that function. But time of day exit, you know, we're saying is if you're wrong, in theory, we should get a bull day. So I just get in in the morning uh, and if it's going to be a bull day the vast majority of movement happens in the uk and the us session so if i get in somewhere in asia towards the tail end of asia before the volatility starts to come into the market off we go uh, do you think it over the time period of one day is okay you could hold it longer this is stuff that I will eyeball. Yeah, I mean, this is this, this is the beauty of having the support resistance propulsion indicator plotting your trades on the chart. Yeah, so when uh, when the trades have taken place, they'll be plotted on the chart, and I'll be able to see, you know, just quickly run through an eyeball all the ones that worked out. So we got in, we got out end of day. Should we have held it till end of week? I could try an end of week exit. But that will rely on retail being wrong all week. So that retail sentiment, and this is the thing that I found with this, the testing on this, I would, when I when I did the testing on it, I did it in the live rooms in here. Um, this was last year. What I found was you get into a trade, yeah, and it would hold be in the trade. And all of a sudden you'd look at the chart and you go, but retail sentiment is 63%. Why on earth did it take a trade? Because three days ago, Retail sentiment was 91%. It's 63% now. So the retail crowd have changed their mind. 
So that one where you were going long, now actually it's neutral to bearish. This happens in, you know, in 24, 48 hours, this 91 could be a green. It, happened, it changes quick, which is why I'm thinking you need to be out end of day because today they're wrong. Tomorrow they might have changed their mind. If they change their mind tomorrow, I don't want to be doing what they're doing tomorrow. They'll probably come down into the neutral section and then they will turn into the bearish section or the bullish section, vice versa. So I don't know. It needs, it needs, um, I just want to do a run a proper test over a period of time because I've got historic retail sentiment plotted. I can see, I know for a fact when they short, the market goes long. When they long, the market goes short. I know that. It's a fact. I don't have to have this proven to me. Let's short it, guys. No, let's go up market. Yeah, we know this happens. This has been plotted for, since I've been trading, IG have been publishing this information. Information is great. But if you don't know how to make money with the information, it's useless. Yeah, and any strategy that uses a stop loss is going to get stopped out. Where am I getting my data from? My data comes from multiple sources. So my data is sourced from multiple brokers. <clears throat> There's a lot of brokers. Um, it's free from IG. Yeah, but that's only IG sentiment, isn't it? This is only IG sentiment. I'm not interested in what IG's customers are doing. IG publishes signals. Yeah, if IG comes out with a news event, uh, a news article that says oil is likely to collapse because of something 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 the sentiment for ig customers is going to do that so my sentiment is aggregated so this is uh i think it's six or seven different brokers sentiment i've got aggregated this is a view of multiple brokers from multiple countries across the world not just ig for all you know ig could be publishing this to make money yeah. So they publish this. They tell all their clients about this. So what do you think all of IG's clients at the moment are doing with the Aussie dollar, US dollar? It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. IG publish a chart saying that the vast majority of people are longing this. What do you think they're going to do? Short it. Because IG tell you to do the opposite of their customers. But who's the chicken and who's the egg? Yeah. Is IG doing this to make spreads, commissions, and swap their job? Their job is to get you to press buttons. They publish a piece of information that says the likelihood is if you press this button, this will happen. If the opposite happens, you get stopped out, which is equivalent to what? Pressing a button. Which makes you do what? Press a button. All this information IG publishes to get their customers to press buttons because they own a commission, a spread, and a swap. Their job, pressing buttons. This is an overview of all market participants. So what's IG? So IG, Aussie, US. Well, let's look at IG, Aussie, Yen, 30% long. Uh, yeah, see, look, my sentiment is 25% long. IG, 30% of their customers are long. Across the board, overall, the sentiment agrees, but the percentage doesn't. Different, different data. But outcome is still the same. Yeah. Yeah, they're all shorting uh, the yens. All of them look. They're short, 90% are short CAD yen, 83% are short pound yen, 80% are short US dollar yen, 79% are short, short, short. Yeah, but they're right. Yeah, 75% of them are short on the Aussie dollar yen. Well done, guys. You've had a lovely couple of days, haven't you? They're right. It is coming down. But look what happened two of those days. Yeah, news event, news event. Market actually is pushing the opposite direction, isn't it? So if I get in at 8 o'clock in the morning and get out at the end of the day, happy days. If I got in at 8 o'clock this morning and got out there, happy days. If I got in at 8 o'clock there and 8 o'clock there, not good. It's 50% strike rate, isn't it? 
But those not goods are not caused by sentiment. They're caused by retail news or the fundamental news. News events cause that. Yeah. Not market participants. Fundamentals. So if you filter out the days where you've got a news event coming and don't trade those instruments on those days, these won't skew your figures. Overall, I want to know what happens. So, you know, it's, it's an experiment. It'll, uh, it'll work or it won't. Well, it will work because I'm trading in both directions. I can't lose, basically. I physically can't lose. It's how much it moves by, which is what will affect me financially because every day I'm going to be right because I'm trading one with sentiment and one against sentiment. But if one of them moves a quarter of an ADR against me and the other one moves one ADR for me, I'm going to be making some serious cash, aren't I? We will see. Um, <clears throat> from where are the data about re realizement? From where? I've just answered that. Uh, does hedge funds use mean reversion? I don't know. Go and ask a hedge fund. Hedge funds don't use... Uh, hedge, hedge funds are hedge funds. They're hedging for customers. They're not using a strategy. Well, they do use strategies to get, get into the hedges, but the, the point of a hedge fund is they're hedging. Yeah. Hedge funds, basically, their job is to take the opposite side of a commercial uh, expectation. So if you sell wheat and the wheat price is there, when you plant your wheat, by the time you harvest the wheat, the price could be there or there. If it rains, it'll be there. If it doesn't rain, it'll be there. If it's too sunny, it'll be down there. If it's not quite sunny enough, it might be about there. Yeah. So what you do is you hedge on the future price of wheat to make sure that your expectation and requirement of price is, if it's not met, the hedge pays the opposite. It's complicated. But hedge funds, I think you may misunderstand, hedge funds are not there to make money. Hedge funds are there to hedge your commercial position uh, so they, they don't I don't know how they trade don't ask a hedge fund manager but different term concept uh, right I'm off bye I'll be back tomorrow at the same no I won't I'll be back tomorrow at 1 15 uh, and we'll trade the CAD CPI so keep your eyes peeled on news today um, uh, it doesn't seem like the Japanese are interested at all today. Um, so we've had two pushback attempts so far, both failed. Um, so we'll see what happens. But at the minute, uh, it's all about what's going on in the Middle East, and that will affect absolutely everything. So if you see ADR and RSI dashboards lighting up like a Christmas tree, go and look at the news. Um, as you can see with the ends, they already are. So um, if you do want to get in any shorts, not a bad time to do it. All right. Um, so I'll be back tomorrow. Anything you need, I'll be in Telegram and Discord. Other than that, have a good day and uh, watch out for the news this afternoon, which is um, retail sales at 1.30. All right. So have a good one. I will see you guys tomorrow.